And welcome everybody, it's John the Net Guy. It's Tech on Tuesday, number 30. And this is the ultimate flight sim PC build. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm gonna hit go live here on Amazon. We'll let all the Amazon folks in because this is a live show on Amazon, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, and pretty much anybody else that would have me. I'm doing my best uh, to try to get to a million subscribers, but uh, it's taken a while, more than expected. But if you could do me a favor, you could actually follow me on Amazon. That's one of the best things that you can do for me. If you see the the uh, link down there, it says amazon.com slash shop slash the net guy. My follow link is there. If you're watching on Amazon, hit the follow. That would be awesome. I've got like 400 followers now. If I can get up to 2000, we're going to be having the Saturday shows. I'll be able to do this multiple days per week. It's going to be awesome. Today's show is going to be killer i've got so much stuff here it took me an extra five minutes to get on the air today uh just to make sure i had everything ready we do have a giveaway today and this is something i am trying to do throughout the year uh which is to add these cool giveaways here we're building that computer down there by the way and as you see there is a logitech extreme 3d giveaway that is my favorite joystick i showed you guys this one the other day we're going to see it again today we're going to play some more of the same games but we're going to do it on that machine over there which is so ridiculously fast. <laughs> I went to do the benchmarks on it and I'm like, okay, that's night and day. We built a budget machine the other day. When I say budget, it was like $1,200. This thing blows it out of the water. Uh, and it's about $2,500 in parts. I'm just checking the chat here to see who is with us. And we're taking a look. Oh, we got some creators here. We've got Pinky Tech. I got Iggy uh, from This Bites For You. Thanks for showing up, my friend. Wow, I've got a uh, super chat already. Coming from Eli, hopefully I'm saying your name right, Super Chat, Buck99. Thanks, everyone. Welcome, everyone, to the stream. He got the first Super Chat of the day. I appreciate that, my friend. Uh, we've got Jeremy in there. I appreciate that as well. And we'll get over that million. Don't you worry. <laughs> so I'm going to pull up another thing here, which is our giveaway URL. So if you want to win this, the URL is right there on how you enter. The netguy.com slash joystick. The only thing that it's going to be used for is the joystick drawing so there's a place to put in your name for the prize wheel if you win i will contact you we'll get your item shipped off to you directly this is actually sponsored by yours truly i wish i could give away the product that we're going to take a look at today but i can't afford that uh, i can only afford one to show you guys how to build which is what we're going to do today it is a build stream the first product up and i am just put it up on the carousel for everybody is one of my favorite cpus right now i tell you this thing is just destroying now i have it on the description as a 12 700 kf i wasn't sure if i had the k or the kf i have the k skew now that means unlocked for overclocking i believe the f skew is the one that doesn't have the gpu in it so i was able to use this last night and actually get it set up now it's kind of like a cooking show you think i just build these things you know as we go no i've actually built this thing already and i've got some benchmarks for you this is what the machine looks like, just so you can see it there uh, when it was on the bench. And I actually used just a temporary cooler on this thing. And the numbers and the, the out of Cinebench, I'm going to show you them in a little bit. Outstanding. I could not believe the thermals on this thing. I've got a 360 millimeter AIO here from Betru that's going to go in it. It doesn't even need half of that. <laughs> and so it did really, really well on the thermal benchmarks. But if you are going to use that K-SKU feature and you are going to overclock it and you are going to ramp up the voltages and play with all that stuff, you're going to need a good motherboard. So we've got one of those coming up here. Uh, but the whole thing comes around this item and one other item. I actually was teasing everybody on Twitter. I got to pull this up because it was really funny. I thought it was going to be really cool and put this out on Twitter. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just show this, you know, whole uh, collection of parts except i missed one there's one part missing and i don't know if you guys will see it but there's definitely one part missing in this and i was like afterward i looked at it and went oh yeah yeah that was it uh, i'll check the chat here and see if anybody figured out what it was that was missing here do the chat up here hopefully uh <laughs> we'll see some people maybe they can show us what it is uh no oh another super chat from eli how do you feel about your song without a smile hmm I have not heard that song. I will check that later, Eli. Very good, very good. So just checking through whatever else. Uh, no, CPU was in that picture. Uh, Pinky Tech got it. <laughs> I don't see a GPU. Let me see if I can pull this thing up with Pinky Tech's there. Yeah, I got so cool. I was putting everything out there, 
and I forgot the thing that makes this one of the ultimate ones, which is the GPU over here. And it is the fastest GPU in my whole house right now. I hate to admit it. Uh, with the whole, you know, GPU challenge that we all just went through, the best card I had in my whole house was an RX 6800. And I started looking at the specs for Flight Simulator. And this one right here, the th a 3070 Ti, blows it away. It does really a whole lot better than I expected. Um, so the NVIDIA graphics definitely beats the AMD in that respect of a 6800. Uh, so I'll show you that on the side camera here. So you can see that's what we're going to throw in for a graphics card on it. 8 gigs of RAM, which is plenty if you're running 1080, plenty if you're running you know, even 1440, 4K max textures, not a problem either on this one. So yes, Pinky Tech, another great creator. He figured it out first. Let's see here. <laughs> That was what it was missing, the GPU on that picture. Awesome. So we're going to do that PC build real quick. Um, the way I do the PC builds, because you're actually helping me develop review content, is I'm going to shuffle through the parts real quick. I'm going to tell you briefly about them. We're going to slap them together uh, and you know get the machine booted up and work on some benchmarks. And then I can throw it in the case for you. So we can do that real quick. Um, and I may, oh, I'm trying to think about it now. Now that I've got this 360 uh, that I've got to put in there, we might go with the case. Let me pull that out real quick. I have done a show about cases the other day. If you're just joining, this is John the Net Guy. We're doing a PC build stream tonight, and this is probably the coolest looking case I've ever <laughs> come across. I don't think it's going to be fun to build in. I don't think it's going to have great airflow, but I think it's going to look awesome when we're done. And this is the Vetru K1. So this is the case we're building in today. It's a full-size ATX case, and it looks like it's going a million miles an hour when it's just standing still. Another quick thing on it too, this is the tempered glass side. Now I haven't peeled anything off. We're going to put that side on there and we've got seven fans to go in this thing. So I'm looking forward to that, but this is going to be an amazing case to throw this all in, especially because we're going for that flight simulator vibe. I think it's going to look really cool. <laughs> uh, there we go. And Zach, he says, uh, I found this... <laughs> 3070 Ti to be the sweet spot. That's Zach, one of our friends here at the channel. Uh, and absolutely, the performance on that card has been excellent. So that's what it's all going in. I'm going to go through the items real quick. We'll kind of give a quick overview. We may check the Amazon page on a couple of these. And speaking of that, if you do need to see where any of these are available, I just recommend hit my Amazon page. That's forward slash shop slash the net guy. Full disclosure, I get a tiny itsy little bit of a commission off that like low single digit percentages like very low <laughs> but it's enough to help me make these shows for you and i really enjoy doing it so let me show you how you get there and i'm going to share my screen here for you guys one second and then you guys will be able to see it there. So that is my net guy page. If you visit that URL, you're going to get this page. And as you go down this page here, you're going to get to see me live. You're also going to get to see these things called idea lists. So if you go to idea lists, I have all the parts for these builds inside these lists. If you go to the number 30 here, it's going to have all of the items. Oh, not if I do that, it's going to have all of the items in this build today, including the extra fans that we're using, the power supply. That's a, a, a list, uh, power supply for less than a hundred dollars, 750 watts. So that's a pretty cool one here. It's going to have a 360 millimeter cooler for less than a hundred bucks. So lots of really cool values here. We are going to throw the uh, Q4 Sabrent rocket in there. That is their four by four PCIe. So that's going to be a pretty cool drive. And then I also have a bunch of these extra one terabytes that I might have gotten from a viewer here recently <laughs> on a barter. Uh, but I picked up a bunch of these. I'm going to throw one of those in just for storage. So, you know, the 4x4 is going to be for playing games and booting off of. But, you know, I don't like having to wait forever for my games to copy over. Or maybe I just want to play one off of the slow drive. Got a really cool drive coming in here. And just because we can, we're going to jam in a bunch of G-Skill RAM in here. Um, this is 3600 mega transfer memory. And that's really important. Now, this board's going to go up to 4800 megahertz memory. It's DDR4. It's not the DDR5. But I pulled up an article that was really, really cool talking about the performance of memory and what its actual impact is to gaming. And you'd be surprised. There's a sweet spot right around 3200, 3600 
uh, cast latency of 16. That's really, really good memory. So let me check the chat one more time, see if we got any questions before we keep going through here. <laughs> 30, uh, 1030 is better than my wife's GPU. And uh, Pinky Tech says he's partial to the 1030. I believe it. <laughs> so first product up here, and you're seeing it in Amazon right now, is the Intel i7, this is the 12700K SKU, and I mentioned earlier that this is unlocked so that we can actually overclock it. We're not going to do that today, but that might be a great thing for a future show is to go over overclocking and what's related to that and you know what, what you have to look out for, what kind of components you want, what kind of cooling you want to go with it. Um, this has eight performance cores, four efficiency cores. So I showed you the 12400 few i think it was a couple months ago now and just how impressive that was that's an incredible budget cpu this one is under 400 dollars right now i think i'm gonna go take a look at amazon and see if we can get the exact price on it so this one if you do with, go with the kf now you can go with the kf cpu on this one not going to hurt anybody's feelings and the reason why is you've got a gpu here so if you get this one it's 377.99 right now it's, it's surprising to actually see the Intel CPU prices drop. That's really rare, um, especially for the brand new 12th gen. And the AMDs have been dropping alongside them. Now, if you're looking at performance specs on this one, it's somewhere around a 5900X. I was looking at that and trying to figure out which one was better for flight sim. And C, uh, user benchmark, which I know everybody loves to hate <laughs> lately, they get a lot of shade. Um, they've compared them, and you know the the general users are getting more performance out of the Intel. So 12700 uh, KF or K, you can get either one of them. If you don't have a GPU, which would be kind of weird to buy this, you could buy the uh, K and use the integrated graphics. Um, just some other basic information. I would rather go to the Intel site to look up the information off of this one but that's available in the carousel right now. So that's the Intel. That's what's gonna power it, but we're gonna need a strong motherboard to go with that. So I've paired it up with, from ASRock, this is the Z690 PG Riptide. Now, I don't know what PG means in this case. I'm hoping not parental guidance. <laughs> Stephen Wells asking about the giveaway. What do we got to do for the giveaway? Let me put that up in the corner for you. Thank you for the reminder, Steve. If you visit that URL down there, you can win, and we'll give it away before the end of the show. I don't want you to think I'm going to ignore you guys there, so just want to do that. I am actually going to... Sorry, turn our AC on here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're running. Perfect. So I'm going to pull this motherboard up here. Now, this is from ASRock. You've got many, many choices. I've shown you over the last few months um, the 610s. I've shown you a 660 board, I believe. And this is the 690. So, you know, you've got a lot of choices when it comes to motherboards. Some allow you to overclock. Some don't. Some allow just memory overclocking. There was some recent stuff they found out about that. Um, then if we open this one up, let's take a quick look at it. A couple things about it. It's a full-size ATX board. So it's going to take up the entire length of most cases. Packaging's really cool. You'll notice a, a size difference almost immediately on these boards. Uh, lots of neat features on this one that you expect out of a higher-end board. Now, is it the highest-end board you can get? Probably not, but let's zoom in here and We'll get you a few things to point out here. So just right away, four memory slots, which is always important. Tons of room for RAM on this. It's going to have an armored uh, Hyper M.2. No idea what that means. <laughs> but it does have PCI Express 5 uh, support on this. Now, I haven't gotten into the PCI Express 5 generation. It has the M.2 Wi-Fi. I thought it was interesting for a board that costs this much. Let me pull up the exact cost right now for you guys so we can see that. Um, so... The Intel boards are generally a little bit more expensive than what you'd get in comparable AMD boards. So this one's $168.99 right now. It is $11 off in the carousel. But you know, generally for the price on these, you would expect a little bit more features such as integrated Wi-Fi. Now they give you 2.5 gig killer Ethernet on there. Uh, so that's nice to have. Um, you've got plenty of slots here. You've got another M.2 down here. I'm counting at least eight. <laughs> SATA, SATA. You, let me know. Is it S-A-Y-T-A, SATA, when you pronounce it? I know it's spelled not, not spelled that way. Or SATA to you. 
Sata, Sata. This will be potato, potato. Let me know in the chat what you guys think, and then I'll tell you if you're wrong or not. Uh, so it's got uh, at least eight ports. It's going to have the USB-C on this one, which is kind of a giveaway now because... I don't have a USB-C front panel header, so or header. I've got that, but I don't have the front panel port. Um, standard USB 3.0. It looks like it's got two of them uh, sets here. It's going to have, I believe, six different chassis fan headers. It's got three different uh, addressable RGB LED outputs on it. So this is going to have a lot of those capabilities. It does have from a very old holdover, the old RGB, the four pin style. Um, but you know, again, very well laid out, pretty standard on the bottom side. Some of the things that you would normally expect to see on this would be like an integrated backplate. This one doesn't have that. So you're saving a little bit of money. You don't have the integrated backplate. There is, I don't know if I would call this cooling. There's definitely a plate here. Maybe we can take a look at that over here. So, you know, for the motherboard right over there, you've got the chipset cooling. You know, in my X570, I actually do have a real fan over here. Uh, and that's from their Tai Chi series. So, you know, on the AMD side, you know, definitely a little bit more expensive board for sure. Let's see what people are saying about the SATA versus SATA debate here. <laughs> I can't wait to see what I've started here. SATA, Jeremy says, interesting. Uh, we'll have to see if somebody defines it all out and figures out exactly what it is. So overall decent board. Again, it's going to have some features. It's going to have the BIOS flashback over here. Uh, let me try to see which one that one is labeled. So this is the clear button down here. So it's going to have a bunch of different buttons. It doesn't have any diagnostic readout. That was another thing that I actually really liked about some of my other uh, boards, especially in this price range is that they're going to actually have a number numeric readout. That's the Tai Chi I use. Um, Comparative, you know, you've got the Gigabyte over there, the X570. It's definitely going to, you know, compete with this thing. From a price perspective, uh, you expect to pay a little bit more on the Intel side. So that's the motherboard that we're going to go with today. I'm going to put that back down here. We're going to get to building here very soon. Everybody. A um, couple quick things. Let me pull this up real fast in the carousel. And just a quick hi to Stephen Wells. Thank you again for entering the giveaway and the follow. I appreciate that. And Caitlin C., thank you for the follow. Uh, did you ever mention what we needed to enter the giveaway? Somebody Regan is asking. Regan uh, should be down in the corner there. You can go ahead and do that, and you'll get there. Thank you guys again that are showing up here. And uh, Jeff, welcome back. Awesome to see you as well. Travel Diva started following. Thank you, Travel Diva. So graphics cards, let's talk about those. The prices of graphics cards have just plummeted, which is amazing for us. The problem is so have a lot of people's wages and financial situations. So, you know, hopefully you've saved up a little bit. You've been waiting to get a GPU because there's a lot of really good GPUs that are on the market. You know, 3070, 3070 Ti's and 3080's that you can buy now. So I'm trying to do this without breaking the box. Like I've done this already once, but now, of course, I tear the box up. So let's unbox this guy real quick. It is pretty straightforward unboxing. There is the unit right there. And I'm just going to open up the whole box here. It's got a box within a box. <laughs> All of this stuff is very tightly packaged in here, but you know, talking about a very heavy graphics card. That's one of the things I noticed about it initially was just the raw weight of this. So you can open it up here and there is the tough gaming. Now what's interesting about this, if you're looking at like case clearance, it actually has this little bump up that's higher than most. Now I haven't actually, I've taken this thing out and did some basic benchmarking with it, but I did not peel off all the stickers. You can see it's going to have a ton of that protective peel and stick stickers that are on it. It does say to remove them. Uh, full metal back plate on it is here. Another interesting thing that I don't know if you can see that right there, but it's got a performance mode versus quiet mode. We're keeping it on performance mode, but yeah, there's the overall card design. Now this thing is super heavy, but one of the features of the 690 uh, is that it actually has a graphics card support bracket on the back end, which you can actually add to the motherboard. Now I haven't done that before. That's going to be a really interesting one. This is a triple fan overclock model the oc yeah, with eight gigs of ram so that is going to be the gpu for our build today 
nothing else in the box here that I saw. Uh, as far as outputs go on it, you know, a lot of people are complaining about the uh, 6600, 6500. The 6500 only has two outputs. This one has two HDMI, which I'm going to use today. That's why the covers are missing. But then it also has three DisplayPort outputs, and all of those are full resolution, which is really cool, and a stainless steel bracket for the back, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if I have... I don't have my scale down here, I don't think. Oh, I do. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Let's take a look at how much this thing weighs, because it weighs a lot. I don't know what they say it weighs on Amazon, but we're going to take a look at this thing live. Let's see. Do I have this one? Yep. Yeah, my wife, uh, she actually dunked this scale. Uh, so let's not use this for scientific measurement anymore. But it was kind of funny. She she brought me this. This is not working. She took my other one from the Prime Day show and stole it for the kitchen. And so now this is my uh, one. I'm going to just go ahead. I zeroed it out. We're going to look at it in grams. 300 and, oh, sorry, 1,390-ish, 89. Uh, that is 49 ounces which is three pounds, one ounce. So we've gone over the three pound graphics card threshold with this one. This thing is definitely uh, burly as far as graphics cards go. Taking a look real quick to see if anybody's asking any questions on here. <laughs> I don't know, Zach. I don't know if we can allow that. That's so uh, you can use it as a self-defense weapon. I don't know. That's uh, one, one way, I guess. Let's see here. Hide that. <laughs> Very cool. So I'm going to set that off to the side. I'm going to pull up the next product, which is actually about storage. I talked about this just briefly, and that is going to be from Sabrent. Now, Sabrent is not going to be Samsung. It's not crucial. You know, it's not a, a low spec brand, in my opinion. You know, it's not going to be the Silicone Powers or some of the other, you know, very budget friendly brands. But, you know, overall, I've had a Sabrent Rocket um before i really really enjoyed that one this is the rocket q4 and the claim to fame on this one is that nvme um four by four so it's going to be pci express four four lanes and you can see in this thing it's got kind of this almost like a salmon pink color comes in a hard case now it's not going to have some really burly heat sinks or anything which is fine because we honestly don't have heat sinks in um the, you know room for a heat sink in this motherboard but we do have an integrated armor heat sink in the motherboard so there it is right there it's only one terabyte and yes i could probably go a little bit more but honestly my budget for the show wasn't high enough to do that so that's from sabrent that is their rocket q4 and we'll talk about the performance of this one i've actually already benchmarked it so i can pull those numbers up we don't have to wait uh, but once we get that in we'll talk about that so that was the primary and game storage again that's going to be super important if we want our games to load fast uh, last i mentioned and i'm going to pull it up in the carousel is the samsung 970 evo plus now these are getting a little bit older there are some other ones out there um, this is a one terabyte model. Now this is a Gen 3 by 4, so you're going to get four lanes uh, PCI Gen 3, which is fine. A lot of motherboards don't have PCI Express 4 all the way down uh, through all the additional ones, so that's going to be pretty cool. Um, so this is kind of our secondary drive, like I mentioned. We do need to keep all of this cool, which is going to be accomplished with probably one of the largest uh, <laughs> radiators I've used. I've used a 360 a couple times. Honestly, I don't go that big because honestly, I don't buy CPUs that expensive and that fast uh, normally. But what's nice about this one, and again, this hasn't been opened, um, it's going to have the Vetro pedigree. Now I'm going to call it Vetro, Vetro. You guys can pronounce it however you want. Um, but the K5, or sorry, V5, why? Why am I saying K? The Vetro V5 fans, the addressable RGB fans, and the cooling system that they have was phenomenal. They're one of my favorite coolers for just a regular air cooler, regardless of the CPU you have. So I said, what better to pair with this case than their branded version? They did not provide this. I had to go out and buy this on my own. I did watch for a sale that came by. So, you know, right now this one's for $199. Uh, sorry, why did I say 199? It's 99.99 on the carousel right now. 360 millimeter. It is going to have with the uh, interface on it. It does have PWM fan control, so you're not going to be sitting there spinning, 
you know, the fans faster than you need to. Uh, pump speed, 2,800 RPM. That's all pretty normal and a pure copper bottom on the, the block there. So that's pretty normal. The nice thing about these AIOs, again, they've gotten so good nowadays. They're going to last several years. I know people were worried about them, you know, exhausting their fluid or running dry. Um, the one nice thing I can say about a, an air cooler, just a regular one, is that if a heat pipe air cooler is if your, you know, fan fails, a single fan, your cooler has some passive cooling. If your pump fails in one of these, and I've had it happen before, your CPU just basically goes to the max. It's not going to get much cooling at all. So um, not from, from Vetru, but I had another brand of uh, AIO cooler do that to me. So now the machine was just fine. Again, fixed the cooler, replaced it, and it was good. But that's just something to think about depending on how you're putting this together. So, and again, thank you, Travel Diva, for the follow. I appreciate that. Just taking a look here. Uh, I have the AIO in white. Oh my gosh, Pinky Tech has the 360 in white. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely look. <laughs> uh, pretty slick on this one. So that's the basics. I'm trying to see if there's a couple extra things that we're going to need, which there are. Um, and I don't know if I put this one in, but yeah, there is a, a kit that we're going to have to borrow from. Now, I just happened to buy two days ago because I realized that the 12th Gen 1 that I had bought, I bought it so early, that 360 when it was on sale, that I did not have what the newest ones ship with, which is the LGA 1700 bracket. So let me see if I can do it here because it's on the front. See how it says Intel 12th Gen ready? Make sure that your box, when, you, when it arrives from Amazon, make sure it says that if you're buying the 240 or the 360 from Amazon, this is the 240 because that's a different bracket size and you're going to need that. Now, I went out quickly and I bought this. It was here in two days. It actually just arrived this afternoon because I needed the kit that it ships with now. But if you don't have the kit that it ships with, I've actually got down on the carousel linked a $7 kit. And maybe a spoiler here, I heard that if you contact the company and say, hey, I just bought this really cool 360 AIO. It didn't ship with the item. They may be able to hook you up with that if you own the product. But if you just need the adapter, for whatever reason, you can actually buy it on the carousel as well. So that's a 240, which I'm going to use in a future project, probably an AMD that doesn't need that. Let's go over and talk RAM. I did tell you a little bit of a spoiler on the RAM speeds. And this is the most expensive RAM that I could buy. <laughs> this is the Trident uh, from G-Skill, the Z-Neo RGB. Now, um, memory is going to have two numbers. It's going to have, well, it's going to have about a lot of numbers, but it's going to have this number first here, which is the 3600, 3200, 2400. That's going to be the mega transfers. Now, this is DDR4, double data rate. So it runs at 1800 megahertz times two or whatever the math works out to. Uh, in this case, it has a second number, which is the cast latency. That's the CL16 number that you see right there. And that's also really important because the CL16 uh, is how long it has to wait between refresh cycles. So, you know, there's some issues there. If you have really slow cast latency, but really fast memory, you're still not going to get the same performance of the memory that you want. So both numbers are really important. Look for 3200 or better mega transfer memory. And Ryzen was really sensitive to this. Intel, not so much before, but <laughs> they actually have some better uh, stuff now. You know, now that they have the DDR5 out, hopefully the price of some DDR4 comes down. Let me pull this one up on Amazon because I think, uh, actually not on Amazon, let me pull it up. I want to do DDR4 versus DDR5 12th Gen Tech Spot. I want to pull up an article real quick. Yeah, here we go. This is a good article that I wanted to show you guys from the guys over at TechSpot. Now, I don't watch their stuff, so I can't tell you anything about them, but I can pull this up for you. And so it's talking about the best RAM for the Intel 12th Gen. Now, these guys actually did all the homework. Uh, it would help if you could see me. So these guys went through and did all of the homework. They actually went through DDR4 and DDR5 from a variety of different models here. All of the, the Corsair Vengeance memory, it looks like. See if I can get this. Oh, of course, my browser is locking up on my machine. There is this page is enormous and it's got a bunch of ads, of course. But if we go down here, what I want to show you real quick, if I can find the pages that it's going to come up on, of course, it's taking its time, um, is really when you're looking in the lower end, 
A memory bandwidth is fairly different here. So you can see a pretty strong differentiation in how fast the memory goes. But a lot of times the memory bandwidth is not your bottleneck. So if we come down in here to actual gaming benchmarks, so this number down here, and again, in this case, higher is better, right? So this number down here at the bottom is 2400. So this is Rainbow Six Siege, for example. If you go all the way up to DDR5, 5600, you're getting maybe 10%, um, but the difference in price is enormous on that. So again, 3600, 3200 at minimum uh, or better is a great sweet spot for memory. So just something to think about if you're worried that, oh, you're not buying the DDR5, oh, you're not getting the, you know, 4000, 4800 or better that this supports, it's okay you're going to have maybe a 2 to 5% difference in performance uh, in some games. Again, not a big deal breaker there. So just taking a look here, um, Jeremy has the CL18 kit of these as well. Very cool to know. Um, and lastly, I just have to pull this one up real quick, and that is the power supply. And then we're going to get started building. I think that'll be kind of fun. Get going in this case. So the Antec Earthwatts Gold <laughs> power supply. Now, I've shown this on the show before accidentally because I went to go build with my EVGA power supply and it was actually had a broken wire. So this one is a, an A-list power supply, uh, 750 watts. It is a semi-modular, which is how they save a little bit of money. And you know what? I like that uh, because, again, modular power supplies are great. And what that means is that if you look here, and I'm going to pull it up on the top camera. So what that means is that some of your cords essentially detach. So if you don't need your Molex connector, you don't need maybe an extra uh, power supply, or sorry, PCI Express like this, you don't have to plug it in. But if you do need that extra power, you can plug this in and add another one. Um, this comes with up to four uh, PCI Express 8 ends now they're doubled obviously here so you know technically if you want to be the best assembler <laughs> you should not uh, run the ones that are daisy chained off of each other you should run two separate cords when you're powering this thing up but what they do include is all the standard connectors that you normally are going to use are going to be hardwired to the psu so that's going to save them a little money in assembling it it's going to make it a little easier for you because you're not going to have a wall of connectors here that could possibly slip out so i do like the semi-modular let me know in the chat what you guys i've got a lot of builders this is cool uh, a lot of system builders are in the chat right now some really good people that i trust so it'll be interesting to see uh, what they say but what do you like better do you like modular semi-modular or just regular old power supplies i'd love to hear uh, from those guys in the case but this one overall a good performance um you know it's going to be a gold rated which you can go look through the bronze white gold silver ratings and they're kind of an opt-in rating system they're not actually tested out to this but gold is good you know, it's one of the best ratings that you can get out there i think it's over 92 percent efficient at the middle of the range on the load so uh, very good power supply and i like these ones and it's under a hundred dollars right now as well which is also right in the budget here and i'm going to pull up the last part so we can get started on this <laughs> and that is the case now this case when it ships comes in an enormous box this is the k1 pangolin i showed you a little bit earlier when we were starting up here teasing this one this is 159 dollars right now <laughs> and you look at that uh, 159 bucks it is boy racer all over it this thing just screams boy racer i'm going to take the back panel off completely here just because we're going to be running cables we're doing stuff and i do not want to lose these little tiny screw connectors here but it's got tempered glass on both sides it's going to have front panel usb 3 and regular USB 2 and front panel audio. Not that with a case like this, you'd run much on that front panel here, but just again, a very large case. In shipping, this one had one problem, and I have not actually changed it, which was this piece right here that was riveted moves up and down a little bit. You can see that the rivet popped out of the back. So um, that's how heavy this thing is, that when it was getting assembled here, or you know when it was getting shipped here, that just the case banging around in there actually did damage that piece a little bit. Just full disclosure, that was not me. <laughs> so I'm going to put these off to the side. 
and then we'll get building. Now, normally what I recommend doing is I will build on top of the motherboard box, but in the interest of time today, and because I've already built in the, the motherboard box and tested it out, I'm actually gonna go ahead and build right in the case here. And I am looking to see what I did with the bag of parts for the case. That'll be interesting if I missed that one. <laughs> Give me one second. I'm going to go to a pause screen. I'll be right back here. We're going to take a look for that. Okay, I cheated. I'm back early. <laughs> I got it right here. So yeah, this is a piece that I actually took out when I was taking pictures, but um, this is hanging on the back normally, and this is going to be your screw kit for the motherboard, and that's the important thing that we have that. We have the instructions there, and the user manual, and a few zip ties over here. So we're going to get those out. I'm trying to look to see if there's anything I'm going to want to do. Now, I've been using... A screwdriver here and a couple people have asked me about this thing um, and this one is from Fantic I think a Fantic uh, I don't know how to pronounce that here but it's the Nex NEX E1 Pro right there hopefully you guys can see that and I'm actually getting it scratched up and all beat up because it's been so useful I'm actually gonna try to use that as much as I can in building this system uh, but super easy to use you literally just press this back button and that causes it to go in reverse. You press the forward button, it causes it to go in forward. You have two level sets here. I didn't put this in there, but maybe I should do this on my future build streams. Maybe I should automatically be putting this in here because it is one of the coolest things that you can do. Uh, Caitlin is asking, when do you do the giveaway? <laughs> Oh, she also said, hey, where did you go? Lisa, uh, thank you for the follow there. Meat Vase, thank you for the follow on Amazon. And MS, thank you for the follow. Uh, I had to go grab that piece. Sorry about that. When I was doing all the pictures, I had to make the case look pretty, so I pulled some of the instructions out. Uh, definitely needed to put that back in. So uh, I'm going to start with the motherboard here. We're going to get this thing ready to go in the case. I do like to put the CPU in and a couple other things just while we have them over here, so I'm going to make some room. Um, let me grab that real quick. So there's your motherboard on the overhead. And I'll put myself down here in the corner, grab the CPU so we can unbox the CPU pretty quickly. These Intels do not come with the CPU fan like a lot of the AMDs had been shipping with a fan or a cooler. Um, not sure why, if they're just saving money or if they realize that you're going to end up putting an aftermarket one on anyway. The lower spec ones, the 12400, did come with a fan. So I'm going to go through here. Now you can leave that plastic cover on and it should pop out. I'm going to go ahead and place the CPU here. That's in. Now by pushing that down, it will pop the cover off so you never have a point where your uh, pins are exposed. I probably should have shown you those, those uh, very delicate pins where the CPU was going to go. So that's one of the potential issues on Intel is that you have the CPU, there we go, that is in, uh, just looking to make sure everything looks right. So yeah, that's one of the potential issues with Intel is you can damage the pins on here if you don't have this in right. Uh, on AMD, you can damage the pins on the back of the um, chip itself because it doesn't have the LGA, it has the FPGA. So. 
definitely there. Now save these pieces here. You never know if you're going to have a warranty issue and you need to send it back. Don't throw this plastic piece out. You may need to button that back up for shipping back if there's ever an issue. And this, these, I've got a stack of these, but they, they come in constantly handy, especially if you're going to be ever shipping CPUs to somebody if you're selling it. So, hey, Serene, welcome to the show today. Good to see you guys there. We are going to be doing the giveaway here later, and it is going to be pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, parts for the case are in the case box or one of his robot vacuums got it. Oh, you're so mean to me. And Zachary, he says, love the Fantic. And it's absolutely true. The, the Fantic screwdriver does save some time. There had been some quality issues, I think, with some of the early ones, um, just so you know. Uh, but if you get the good ones, and I love Amazon's return policy, that can be pretty nice. We're going to drop the RAM in next. Now, you could drop the RAM in after you get everything in here, but with the CPU clearance that we're going to have, the fact that we're doing the AIO cooler on this, all that stuff, I would rather drop the RAM in right now. So this is that Trident RAM. Now, memory is going to have a short side. It's going to have a slightly longer side. Now, you can look at that down here. I, I want to start like a Twitter debate. <laughs> Whoever came up with this thing where the other side does not open or move? I, I'm not a big fan of that. I would love to hear you know, where the logic in that is, but the easiest way to install it, slide it to the end, push straight down and click. Now, if you were only going to do two RAM chips, you would do the second and fourth from the CPU in most cases. Read your manual. It'll tell you the best way to do it. Uh, see, I almost did it backwards there. The nice thing is once you get the first one in, you can essentially just follow the style of the memory. And what I love about this memory, and I got to show you on this overhead when I slap this one down, is it has that theme that we're kind of going with here with this like brushed metal cut edges, you know, real sharp angled. I thought, man, this is going to look great on here. Now, just my luck. I'm wondering if the AIO uh, <laughs> cooler is going to fit over this, but let's hope we can always hope. So I'm just loading the next one up and this is a lot of Ram. Do you need 64 gigs? If you're making the ultimate <laughs> flight simulator, yes, you do. <laughs> Uh, flight simulators are really interesting, you know, especially graphically. They're definitely a different kind of challenge. You know, you can get 60 frames a second in a flight simulator, and that's a okay. You're not shooting bad guys. You're not, you know, twitchy fingers, split second decisions that you have to make. You know, uh, you're not competitively shooting. So this one, you know, I'm aiming for something that's going to have a a low dropout rate. You know, it's not going to have 1% lows that are super high because you don't, or sorry, super low because you don't want this thing to lag or jerk, but you want it to have a nice smooth uh, experience. This chip is going to do that. Uh, between the performance and the efficiency cores, that's another interesting thing about these Intel 12th gens is they, they've come up with that. It saves a lot of energy and a lot of heat if your cores are not spooled up to the max all the time, or if you can use an efficiency core to keep the background thread refreshing, maybe it's some Windows process, and you can put your performance cores on the stuff that matters like your gaming. So I'm gonna check the chat real quick. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Pinky Tech saying I hate that so much, especially when you have large heat sinks on the RAM. And these are pretty tall. I've got larger ones that stick way out there. I've seen some pretty epic examples here. And then Pinky Tech says, sometimes overkill is underrated. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Pinky Tech's got a great channel if you haven't seen his stuff already. So that's the memory. That's the CPU. I'm trying to think of what else I can do. SSD. Let's do that one real quick. I'm going to use that screwdriver I've been bragging about. So again, this is how the screwdriver works. I hit this back button. It starts spinning to go out and in. And it works down on these little tiny screws. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm going to try to hold it up so you can hear. It's not going to like win any races. It's not trying to like <laughs> pull things out super fast, but it absolutely works well. So I'm going to drop both of our hard drives in here and pray that it's going to boot off of this one up first. Now these are supposed to both be hyper 212 or sorry, hyper M2 keep thinking hyper 212 that's like a cooler um, no these are both hyper m2 slots now i'm going to do the same thing in reverse i'm just going to hit the opposite button direction and it starts to thread now i did not you'll notice peel off the um, adhesive on the bottom of this only one because i like to swap out parts a lot and i don't want to have an ssd that, or an nvme ssd 
that is stuck to the bottom of my <laughs> heat sink. So pull out the opener real quick. We'll open this one. Yeah. Zach's telling us about his Noctua coolers, which are, by the way, excellent coolers. He had to raise them up an inch because of his RAM height. And you can actually even go buy low profile memory. Um, this stuff, again, is it crazy? <laughs> it's about the same size as the heat sinks down here. And those are pretty high heat sinks from ASRock there. Uh, but yeah, it's not, not awful. So then again, these are the 970 Evo Pluses. This one says it has a 3,500 megabyte per second transfer rate. I would believe it. Um, Samsung, if you can afford it, is one of the better NVMe brands. Now, uh, one thing I'm missing here is a screw to hold it down. Where do you find that? It's underneath your motherboard box, all of your extra stuff. And I should have shown you this earlier, but I'm just going to bring it up now. So inside your motherboard box, underneath everything, is going to be all your accessories. Now, we're going to need the back plate anyway, so that's good that we got that out of there. Uh, SATA cables, and it's S-A-Y-T-A, -A, some people are saying. <laughs> so SATA in there. Um, this is the support from the motherboard. I've not ever used one of these. This will be interesting if uh, somebody wants to talk us through that. And then it's going to have a bunch of these little tiny standoffs in M.2s. As well as, and I don't know, somebody's going to have to look this up and tell me what the PG button is for. Is this like parental guidance when you're building this thing? No, this looks like a keyboard keycap <laughs> for PG. I would never trust a CD that came in with this. I'd just go download it, which probably isn't as trustworthy anyway. So I'm going to look for an M.2 screw like this one, and I'm going to use that. I don't need any of the other stuff. The one funny thing that they actually do include in here in the Riptide box is a postcard. So if you want to send that to somebody, I'm going to save that actually. I'm going to send that to another creator. Uh, we'll find out who we do that to. Uh, but be looking in your mailbox if you're a creator because I'm going to find a way to send you the postcard here. So we're done looking in that box. We've got our goodies out of it that we're going to use. Okay, and this is the little tiny M.2 screw. Probably the smallest screw in computing, one that if you sneeze, you lose. So we're going to get that out of there. Now, the, one of the issues with the Fantic is it doesn't come with a very strong magnetic, almost no magnetism. And if you want it to be magnetic, sorry, you guys are like looking at the back of my head. If you want it to be mag magnetic, you actually uh, slide it in a slot in the case. And there's a case for this. And you can do that over and over to magnetize it. I might need to do that again soon. So we've got our storage is installed. We've got our back plate. Let me show you this other plate and we can see if anybody's installed this in the chat, let me know. This is my first time with a graphics card support bracket that goes on the motherboard. I've seen some graphics cards that have their own support brackets. That's not new, but there's a graphics card support that screws in here and the instructions were not great <laughs> that way. This is the bracket here itself. We'll take a look here. And this is from ASRock as well. And I guess the idea is that it would screw in here. It looks like there's only one way that it can fit. That it would screw in here. And then it has this like guide for your graphics card that would screw in. So it's almost like a support for the back side of it. I'll take a little bit closer look for you guys. Let me know if you guys have experienced with one of these. I've never installed one of these before. So I'm just taking a look and see if my other creators there have installed these, but we're looking at today the Intel 12th Gen 12700K is the chip that's going on here. Um, and then this is a bracket. I'm going to leave the bracket off for now. I can always add that on later. Probably going to be a lot harder later, but since I don't have experience with those, I'm not going to steer you wrong. It is not a required piece of it, and this is definitely something uh, crazy. Pinky says he did not ever use one like that. Uh, me neither. So again, this is your IO plate. One thing to remember about these IO plates, um, all X570, Z590s are not equal. You can see here, it's got some low latency USB ports. I've never heard of that, and I have no idea if it's just a gimmick. But the Phantom Gaming low latency, it only has one, two, three, four, five, six USB A's on the back with one USB Type C and one HDMI. So for a board that honestly costs this much money, you know, in the past 160 range, 
it is kind of weird to see that um seen the sata brackets before but never had a board with one on there yeah so it's weird it's like a, a graphics card holder or some sort so we'll do that um so we'll keep that because that's going to go in the back of the case i think there's nothing missing here i'm just doing a double check visually um just as we're going around the board for you guys you know we are going to put the power supply connectors on here there's plenty of room on the top sometimes if you have a case that's now these are the EPS connectors. It's some additional power for the CPU. This one happens to have one, two, three, four pins. This is an eight and a four. Um, but, you know, their power supply actually has enough for two eights. And that's if you had a lot of power. Um, surprisingly, I think this is 125 watt max, if I remember right, of consumption. Um, but, you know, fairly low power draw considering the performance you're getting. Standard 25 pin there. Don't think there's anything else that we actually have to do to the motherboard itself. So I'm going to slide this all over. We'll put that back plate in and we'll start building because I want to boot this thing up and show you some of the performance numbers that we've seen out of it because it's pretty cool. Another reason that I actually went with, with two of the NVMe drives, to be completely honest, was how easy it is to build when you have those NVMe drives. It's also going to improve the cabling because this case does not have great cabling. So all I'm doing right now is I'm looking for the alignment of all of my screws just to make sure I've got standoffs in the right location. And again, I'm giving you the back of my head. So there is a standoff on the bottom there. There's no standoff here next to the bottom side of the GPU, even though there's a hole. So you can decide if you want to take the extra standoff that they have here and enter it over there. But it looks like, you know, you could put a, a different motherboard in here. You can put an M motherboard or an MATX. I'm going to put this extra one in here just because I know a lot of times we're pushing cards down a lot. And I actually do have, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but I actually do have the tool for tightening down those. Now what's funny about it is it never works quite right, especially on the metal of these cases most of the time, because those things need a lot of torque. They just paint right over these. Okay, that looks like it's down enough. I'll give it another couple turns. Sometimes you have to back it off and then redo it. Okay. Just to be safe, I'm going to give it one more turn here with an actual set of pliers because, again, those do a much better job. So if you're just joining us, we're building a flight simulator PC tonight. This is an Intel 12th Gen. It's going to have 20 threads it's going to have eight performance cores four efficiency cores um, very very good performance numbers overall so if you're looking to build a pc out of the intel 12th gen it cannot go wrong with this kind of setup it has a budget friendly board now that we've got that you know what i'm just going to put that back io shield in first let's see if you guys can see off of this angle better so io shield right here it's going to go in the back audio is almost always on the bottom just push it through. Now that's another differentiation on this board is it doesn't have an integrated IO shield. And I know a lot of my creator friends are like, ah, you know, <laughs> go with the integrated as much as you can. Cause then you don't forget it when you're doing your builds. There we go. Just lining everything up. That can be a challenge, especially depending on the quality of the case. I hate to say it cause we're checking products out here today. Um, you know what? That is way off. So I'm just looking at the IO shield. Again, this is the problem we had with the uh, the K2, the trash can build, I call it now, um, because what I'm looking at specifically, and I'll show you here on the top camera. Yeah, I'll come down a little bit. So what I always do is I always like to put this one right here in the center, and I like to enter that one first. And then it gives me the ability to slide the board around, kind of jockey for position exactly where we want it. And the problem with this one is when I put that in the correct position, I'm my IO shield, my HDMI is right on the bottom side. So again, quality build quality on this one, not exceptional already. <laughs> so that's going to give me a little bit of pause on this. But again, I'm giving you a live look at this and we're building this PC live together. So that's one of the things that I would warn you of. Now it just kind of popped in and that is fitting a little better. Let's see if this one's gonna be the other size standoffs. 
Let's see. Yeah, it's going to use fine thread. So we're going to use fine. This is one, I would say it's an advantage um, that you can do one handed screwing. Now you notice I actually screwed that in and I didn't have to, you know, turn my hand or twist my hand at all. Okay. So that's fitting better. It popped into position better, but again, I'm looking at all of the positions of these screws because now I can screw all of them down. Uh, question in the chat. Let's pull it up here. This is from Leticia Burkett. Can you make good money? on gaming ones, um, specialized in gaming PCs. And you know what? I got a lot of creators in here. I'm going to go ahead and put the chat overlay up here and we're going to see what they think about this. Hopefully again, be nice, everybody. <laughs> I'm letting you guys see the chats that we're getting in right now. Um, but I've got a lot of really good creator friends here and some that are PC builders here and that build, uh, and sell locally, but I'm gonna let you guys see that here. But I would say you could, and you can, it's just depending on where you get your parts. Uh, we'll see what other people say. So if other people have any ideas, feel free to yell them out here. I don't know what my latency setting on my stream is. I think it's fairly low, so we should see that. There we go. We got a couple inputs. <laughs> Better now with video card prices. Ain't that right, Zach? Oh, my gosh. For the longest time, you couldn't get a GPU. So what was funny is like the the most popular builders were the ones that had a source for GPUs. I felt so bad because right before we couldn't get GPUs, and I'm not going to use the term why, um, right before we couldn't all get GPUs, um, I had bought like a 1070s, two 1070s. I almost had a third, but I missed out on it. And I paid like 200 bucks for them. And now I look back and it's like, I should have sold all of them. I kept them. I wasn't trying to hoard, but I was trying to build machines and do comparisons. Now I got all the main screws in there. So that's looking pretty good already. Don't see any issues there. Um, I'm going to get that AIO going next, just cause I need the room. And with this power supply, that's going to go down here. I'm just going to give you a little bit more room to see the bigger picture here with the power supply. That's going to go down here on the bottom. I'm going to get that AIO started and we'll get that next. So margins aren't great. Hopefully you're going to get uh, some good questions there. That's coming in on the chat. So glad we were able to use that feature, give you a little bit of perspective of the different markets. I know those are folks all the way around the country right now. So I'm going to have to open two different boxes here and I'll show you why. So this first box is that 360 AIO but I'm going to need the adapter that's coming from my next box. So let me get these out of the way, do a little area cleanup. Let me know in the chat if you're a messy PC builder or if you like to work in a super clean space. I have my theories on some people. <laughs> I've seen some of these guys build and uh, when they're doing their builds online, I, I doubt that their building is clean as that. <laughs> so I'm going to pull this up on the side camera so you guys can see it again. Uh, another product from Vetru, this is the Lurker V360. Now, again, this one does not show LGA 1700 compatibility, but you can buy from the link in the video description uh, an adapter. So they have an adapter for that. So this is really common with most AIO kits. You're gonna get the three separate fans here. And I'd recommend pulling all the parts out before you get really too far of assembling or trying to assemble because some will go with different models. You'll have a radiator that's continuous here. So the way they get away with not having to fill these things is that the AIO radiator and the pump and the, the cold plate here are all tied into one unit. So you got lots of cool installation options. I'm going to pull this out of the way as I grab the last couple pieces. So in this case, we have a fairly large parts kit and as luck would have it, the instructions flew out as soon as I opened the box. So let me go grab those. <laughs> Studio is not that big. Okay. And then these are the instructions for the Lurker V360. So it's going to have all that information. Now, now that I've opened this one, I'm actually going to open the other one. This is the uh, 240 AIO. And it's really just so I can show you the difference in size, but as well, I'm going to sneak the adapter out of here that I need. They use the same mounting system apparently, 
which is going to save me a bundle. Rare Apple saying, where's the GPU? And Rare Apple, you just missed it earlier. I did a, a poll and I asked people that same thing on Twitter. Uh, what was missing of this build? And it was absolutely the thing he pointed out first yesterday on Twitter, which was, I forgot about the GPU. Just my luck. So I'm going to pull the parts kit out of this one. Hopefully I don't miss them. Let me actually grab the AIO out too. And you guys are going to be like, oh my gosh, look at all that stuff. Yeah. Tons of parts here. Now I'm not going to take this one out just because I want to show you the difference in size. Uh, 240 millimeters refers to the length of the radiator and it's two 120 fans. So it's a little bit over 240. Um, same pump technology, maybe yeah, almost exactly the same pump technology between the two, which is what I'm hoping for. And I'm going to put this back over here and I'm going to use the LGA 70 or ugh. The LGA 1700 set here. Let me double check. Yep, there we go. So, lots of adapters, lots of cords. A lot of times they are going to be labeled as to what they are, which again, in this case, not quite. So, this must be the upgraded one. Yeah. So it's going to be really hard to see, but I'm going to do my best on this one. Let's go side camera here. So this one right here, you'll see that it actually has the writing in here, Intel 1700XX. So that's what I was looking for the whole time is I need this back plate um, and the, the screws that hold the pump down because I'm going to use that. Now, if you buy the one that's on Amazon today, you're going to get the upgraded model if it says so. So double check on that. Uh, instructions in here. It's telling us which back plate to use. This is always the most time consuming part <laughs> again. So that's the back plate we want to use. I'm just double checking to make sure I've got the right screw kits, Intel motherboard. It's going to use these same brackets with this screw. It's got the cooling info. Okay. Now this screw kit, I'm actually going to use the other one of, so let me go bring this up. So this is only going to have enough for two fans. So they've got enough screws and mountings for two fans. I'm going to have to use the screw kit out of this one, which should have more. And the difference on this back plate for Intel is that it's fixed. It's not adjustable. So that's the big thing that you're getting in difference here. Um, that one is adjustable as well. Okay. Don't need that. So this is the AMD bracket, for example. So you can use the standard motherboard clips that come with AMDs and then you can attach that. So that's again, the differences and why you want to keep the instructions and go through the instructions. So I am making sure that I'm getting the right parts here. There's a triple splitter. So I'm keeping these separate. There we go. And there's all the pieces for the fans that I need and the screws to go down to the back plate and let's see here. So I want to use that. I'm going to save both of these just in case. Okay. AMD, you go back, screw kit, you go back. All of these are going to go back in for the 240. Hey, Jonathan talks. Welcome. Jonathan talks hardware joining us today here. Another YouTube creator and PC builder. Done some good review videos recently as well. Uh, hopefully I'll have some of these creators for you on future shows. I want to do like a tech all-stars or a tech roundup. So this is 17XX it's saying on this. So I'm going to keep those. That's 155X. So keep that over here. I think that would be kind of cool to have a tech roundup there for sure. Build time check, anyone? Oh, geez. <laughs> We're retiming him. Sorry about that, guys. I know it takes a little bit longer, especially when you include these AIOs. But the, the outcome of this is going to be great. And if I'm under four hours, I've already beat uh, PC Tech Hustle, which hasn't shown up yet. No, I laugh. Because one of his uh, biggest, most enormous PC builds, he did a uh, essentially a PC case that was enough for a dual PC and a gazillion fans and all that <laughs> it was a great show but man the amount of steps that are required are just mind-boggling when you get there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this back plate on here 
And I'm going to follow the instructions on this. So uh, for this one, we're going to use this back plate. We're going to go through the motherboard and then we're going to screw these little standoffs off. And these are coming out of a bag. When I take it out, you'll see it better. These are coming out of a bag that says 17XX. And that is the socket type over here. I'm going to have to get myself out of the way. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm going to bring this over so you can see it. I'm going to get myself out of the way. So I'm going to work down on this end of the screen here. And this is really hard. I had to, somebody was in my Discord channel the other day, and a lot of people were helping him out, which was awesome. I love to see that. And he was building a, one of his first computers, and he was asking, he said, hey, um, and actually let me pull this off. I don't know if all of these were set to 17. That one is. There we go. So they got to go one notch down. Sorry, that's almost a step I skipped. So one notch down to the 17. I was noticing they didn't want to line up. And so he was asking about his um, motherboard cooler, and it had not installed right. Like he didn't have the CPU going down right. So I think we helped him out there, and it got it all squared away. Okay. look here oh my gosh <laughs> eli got another super chat in here we'll get that up here in just a sec eli thank you again for that that's awesome definitely helps us out now if you guys are picking up any of the products that are in the carousel which is awesome i appreciate that i do get a very tiny commission single low single digit percentages usually uh, on these from amazon which is awesome if you guys do that i do enjoy and i do buy my pc parts from amazon just in general, you know, that's one of the things they do have one of the best return policies. And if you do see something that's on here that you're interested in buying and maybe it's coming from Amazon warehouse, I can't tell you yes or no on that. Uh, but I can tell you, I've bought a lot of stuff from Amazon warehouse. I love, and I enjoy the return policy. If there's ever an issue, I know I can send it back and it's going to be a no, uh, not a problem to return. And that's been one of the easiest things. So now we're taking a look at how this <laughs> is going to fit in this massive case. Now, a couple things you're going to have to think about too, as we're putting this all together is airflow. So, um, you can definitely hear the skeptics talking as I get this thing ready to go in. Let's see. I need the V facing up and I need this here. Now, uh, we can decide one of two ways here. Let's talk about that. So if I want to see the fans from the back side here, so as this thing's sitting up when we're done, if I want to see the RGB fans on the inside, I'm going to have to put the fans in essentially backwards. Now, Iggy uh, over there from This Bites For You had a really cool fan demonstration video. I just watched it. And he talked about the easiest way to understand which direction the airflow is on a fan. Now, this is kind of cheating, but here, this one it has on the Vetrus, it's got an arrow. So you know that the air comes in the top and goes out the bottom. But another quick way to know is if you can fit your finger in there and get it chopped <laughs> because it's not, doesn't have anything in the way, that's the intake. They always generally go towards the frame. So if you're going to want air to be passing through this, you're going to want the frame facing you if it's going to be drawing air in. And we generally want that. So a couple different ways I can install this is I can install and oh my gosh, this is going to be challenging. <laughs> you know, I'm looking here. Uh, there is, it looks like a separate plate. Oh goodness. That's going to be fun. Um, I'm going to pull that out, but you know, there's a couple ways you can install it. You can either install it with the fans forward. So if you're looking at the front of the case, you'll get a better view of the fans, but the backside is going to be dark or you can have the fans on the inside and the front of it's just going to be a radiator. Let me know in the chat. You guys can decide that real quick while I get some things set up. Um, do you want to see the RGB from the front so I can mount the fans to the front as a, you know, push through, or do you want to see the RGB on the inside? Let me know about that real quick in the chat as I clean up here. Oh, he says top mount. Uh, unfortunately on this case, the top has a curve to it. There's two 120 holes and then it turns like 10 degrees, maybe 15. And then there's another, <laughs> so unfortunately I can't top mount the AIO. That was another really good option. I like that. So just looking in the chat, RGB outside. Mm. 
man, people are going back and forth on this, but the super chat wins uh, on all things as usual. RGB on the front it is. So we're going to do the RGB on the front. <laughs> <laughs> and people can fight over that. If you can super chat more than that, then maybe we'll we'll consider. But uh, so far, RGB won. <laughs> front. Uh, we can fix that. So let's talk about what that's going to do to this install. So I'm going to have my cooler up here, and my heat pump up here, and I'm going to have my cooler in the front. And it's going to be sitting at this kind of rake angle, and that means I'm going to install the fans on the front side of it, which I believe means I'm going to have to go through this back plate now. For these larger ones, especially from the factory, I am going to switch to a regular screwdriver. Even though it doesn't look like I needed to. And I'm going to pull... That looks like there's a fan mount in here that I can take out separately. Okay, and there's three screws on each side. And I wish I had a better angle for you guys to watch this. But this is what happens when you're doing super interesting pc builds you know if this was an nzxt we'd be done an hour ago <laughs> but i really do like their cases um, sometimes these theme builds go great and you get a really cool looking case and you get a really fast machine out of the deal sometimes <laughs> it's a swing and a miss like the vetru k2 that's the uh, other brother of this one i got that one thinking man this is going to be an awesome case for the show and when i put it on I had nothing but problems from the start onward. Okay, so that's the, the front cover that I pulled off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sandwich those fans in between here. So that's why I needed to pull it out of there first. And we're gonna need all the fans facing towards the front. So we're gonna go like this, taking a look. Now flip them XD. I'm trying to figure out what that would be. <laughs> so yeah, Eli's spending some money on that credit card tonight. Thanks, man. I appreciate all the super chats, but I might have a record for the most super chats on any show. I don't think I've gotten that many. <laughs> I like that, man. Um, okay. So again, to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to get all of the wires off on these fans just to make it easier. Now this motherboard actually does have, I believe six chassis fan headers. So it's designed to have a lot. Um, also, we're going to have the RGBs, which we want here. Now, this comes with its own controller. We're going to see, I think it connects to the motherboard if you want that way too. So um, we'll be able to use some of the RGBs and just kind of daisy chain them here. But it'll be really cool. I like, I like the rainbow effect. I think that's what I'm going to go for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sandwiching these. And I want to have the cords on the left side. So I'm running these screws through what I love about having so many creators here on my show right now is that they're all going, yeah, he's going to totally mess that up. They're like, yeah, he's, he's not going to get that one. Right. And then I'm going to be here, you know, diagnosing why this thing doesn't fit. Probably recommending we throw an ID cooling cooler on it. Cause it's easier <laughs> by the end of the show. Jonathan says maybe RGB in the inside looks better to be honest. Well, you know, the cool thing is when, when you're doing custom stuff like this on your own, you can go back and forth, to be honest. Um, you can go try something new. So if you're just joining us right now, and actually I should be updating the carousel to show you the exact product we're putting in. We are putting together the uh, 360 V360 Lurker. Let me just double check and make sure that I have the V360 Lurker. Here we go. We got a ton of people on Amazon. This is awesome. Good to see all you guys here from Amazon showing up. We're taking a look here and uh, nice explanation on that. Don't want to overheat. That's true. Hey, Vicky. Nice to see you, Vicky. E. Thank you for uh, the shout out there. Eric says, hey there. Never build one. Uh, hubby likes it clean. That's an interesting thing. And thank you, Brandy, for the URL of the giveaway that's down there. We're going to do that giveaway uh, right after we post the machine. So if the machine posts, I'll do the giveaway. You guys can decide uh, if you want to take off then, <laughs> but that's what I'm going to do the giveaway there. Just so you guys can see this machine come to life. That's always the funnest part to me of a machine build is if it will post, if it'll come up, that means power on self test for the uh, uninitiated here. So I'm sneaking these fans in here and I probably should have thought about that before I put too many screws in, 
where those specific screws in is to make it easier for myself to get the rest of the fans in. Uh, but that was a nice thing I was going to say about doing this. It's kind of like building hot rods. You know, you can have different hobbies. You know, a lot of hot rod builders will build a hot rod and they'll sell it. And then they'll build another hot rod and they'll sell that. And a lot of it is just because they love building hot rods. <laughs> and so, you know, they'll spend days, weeks, nights in the garage. And then they'll finally drive their hot rod for a little bit. And then they'll sell it and they'll start another project. And that's kind of like this with the fans. You know, we put the fans in and we'll say... Hey, you know, that machine looks great from the front. You can also do a push-pull configuration. So we could add another stack of fans in the back if we wanted to. And we do something like that. That often works. The machine doesn't post, no giveaway. Oh, that would be so much fun. And it would be awesome because I've got so many YouTubers in here that could totally uh, go in on that with me. And be like, if the machine doesn't post, we don't... The giveaway goes down. No, no, no. I'll give the... Thing away youtube's rules and amazon's rules are so tight about giveaways that i have to like follow them very carefully i wish i could be that way and you know uh i don't nobody wants an artesian builds incident let's put it that way i am not the ceo let's put it <laughs> the from the desk of the ceo defunct there we go um little challenging putting these in in this way obviously it would have been nicer to put them on the inside but you know what Super chat is always right, as they say. So let's do that. Getting a couple more in here. The nice thing about this, if everything works, I'll be able to put a lot of the cabling through the back side, especially for these AIOs. So now you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I probably should go to the overhead cam. So I'm putting those fans in and those are going to light up and those are going to then mount to the front of the case here. And you're going to get a really nice look in front on this case. I'm going to do the top down view for just a little bit as I do this last couple. Give you guys a little bit of a view there. <laughs> you know, I love this. Eli is totally trolling, but he's super chatting every other time. So, you know, super chat, super sticker. Uh, keep it up, man. <laughs> you control all you want. <laughs> I'm down with that. Uh, and then we're going to find out later that it's like not his credit card. Uh, that would be just pretty funny if it is. If this is your first time here and you have never seen this show before, one, welcome. Two, you're probably looking at a computer part on Amazon and you've seen me there because honestly, thousands of you watch when we're on Amazon. You kind of drive by. That's one of the problems with Amazon is it kind of you kind of come in and you come out. Uh, pretty quickly but if this is your first time here welcome uh, let me know your name in the chat uh, if you give me a follow i will give you a shout out back on the show live so people will do that let me know where you're watching from uh, i have not seen our aussie connection yet sometimes we get uh, some people from down under i don't know if they're on the uh, the amazon au site do you think there is an amazon au there's got to be right so i'm just putting these in so far, so good. Now, alignment and clearance is not going to be easy having this thing sandwiched like this. But I like it. Now, these are not going in super tight. I'll be, I'll be honest with you on that. I'm not, like, creaking these down because, one, I don't need it that tight on this. And, two, alignment's a little bit forgiving on these. Now, I haven't charged this screwdriver up, but you may have just heard it actually winding down there a little bit. Um, this thing's good for two hours of use, it says. And if it runs out, you can still continue to install these screws just like I'm doing here. You just use it like a normal thicker screwdriver, but it's been kind of fun. And uh, like Zach said, he's actually had pretty good luck with his, which is awesome. I just was doing a bunch of builds and I'm like, you know, I need to try some different options here. So I'm going to loosen these just a tick and just see if we've got a little cord maybe wrapped under one. Okay. Just again, an alignment issue there. You can see the holes right there. I'm just trying to get those aligned for these last two. 
screws. And what we're doing is we're running the AIO with the fans forward. So the front of this machine is going to look pretty impressive. That was our friend Eli super chatted there. <laughs> oh, here we go. Eli is coming back here. <laughs> Sheba dog and samurai armor holding golden trophy. Eli, you rock my friend. And I'm going to go back and watch that on replay to see what that actually looks like. Because unfortunately through my chat client, it does not show us what that is, but he did a super sticker. It looks like, um, so appreciate that. I'm just tightening these down and we're going to get this guy in and we can go from here. Okay. So now I've got all of these cords going and I want them towards the back of this because I want to run those cords out the side back here. I'm actually probably going to attach them, believe it or not, together with just a zip tie here because I want to have access to them from the back and then we'll run them through the front again. So I'm just going to do just quickly zip tie them real quick here. But thank you, Eli. That is awesome. I appreciate that. <laughs> Jonathan says, I'm not spending that much. Uh, you know, if you guys want to get in a super chat battle, who am I to stop? Them, right? You know, uh, building PCs ain't cheap. Kids need new pairs of shoes, but no, I do appreciate every one of those. That's awesome. I do not do Patreon or any of those other services yet. I, I say that now, um, again, I love doing YouTube. And like I said, buy hardware, uh, use the links in the carousel if you can, or the video description, both ways help me out. If you're purchasing the hardware here from Amazon, that is awesome. It helps me get up in the Amazon ranks. Oh boy. Well, that's kind of interesting. You know what? We are not going to be able to do what we originally wanted and only because the thickness, and this is again, problem with theme builds, the thickness of this is too thick when you have the fans on the front to fit the bottom of the case. Now that's normally not a problem. You can go either direction, but what that means is I'm going to leave the fans exactly where they are. Or can I? No, I'm going to have to switch them over too. See, this is what we get. <laughs> Eli says he's going broke. Here we go. Uh, wow. Okay, Eli, I'm just, I'm going to put them up there. You know, I can only put a, the, the ones that are Amazon safe. Let's, let's say that. Uh, so we'll put those up there as we go, but I am going to have to make an audible here and I'm going to have to switch this around. It's okay. You know, this happens when we're PC building. I'm gonna have to flip these over and have to put the RGB on the inside. And the reason for that is, as you just saw, when I was lining this up up here, um, this is so, again, exacting the way they build these cases that there's not enough room for even a 120 millimeter fan down at the bottom. Now, if this was NZXT, any of the other brands, Fractal, you could flip these around and it wouldn't matter. But what I'm gonna have to do is basically move all these over mount this first which is going to be a lot easier now you saw how fast that screw kit uh that that power screwdriver made this process right super easy and this is what i love about this thing if you guys are in the market um i haven't linked to this one but maybe i should put this in all future build streams because everybody's gonna be like how are you doing that so fast it only took you two hours to build that machine um here we go so I'm putting the bracket in from the case to make it a lot easier to install this thing. And then we're going to put this, the fans in from the other side. Now you can decide if you want to put all the screws in or not. I'm wondering if Pinky Tech needs one of these, you know, <laughs> this might be on my list of really cool tech for 2022. I'm trying to figure out, like I have a dash cam that I use every single day. And it's been awesome. So I'm wondering if I need to put that in there. Yeah, look at this. So I just nailed out 12. Now that one's cross threading, but let's, that was operator error. And those are not going to be down too little, too light. And they're not going to be down too hard. But with this thing turned down to low, you can do as little as an M.2 screw. So there's that. This is going to fit into the case this way. So I'm going to want all the cables out that way. I'm just kind of mentally lining this out 
So I want all the cables to fit like that. Now, if I want a push-pull configuration, that's a whole other thing. Um, I do want a pull configuration, so I am going to go this way with it. I want the cables on top. Yes, you can send Gamers Nexus after me later, because I have a whole theory on that. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jonathan's going to go in there. Donation war. I don't know. You guys are killing me here. Pinky's like, why couldn't they do that on my stream? <laughs> yeah, war away, people. Uh, here we go. So I can tell you a, a funny story. After last week's show, and it was a great show last week, I showed a bunch of cool tech off, and I've got some sneaky tech to show you coming up here uh, at the end of this show, if you guys stick around. But we'll do a, we'll do a product show next week. But after last week's show... You know, my kids had started getting sick that day. You know, they were feeling a little feverish, a little lethargic. And I'm I'm doing the show, and I get the text from the wife that says, please come talk to me. And I'm like, uh-oh, what did I do? Uh, it was a good show. It was actually a pretty quick show. And then I go up, and she's like, oh, uh, yeah, I've got chills and a fever and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, no. Last week, we had to deal with the Rona in the house. Um, luckily, I did not get it. A little warm today, but I think that's just because I'm assembling PCs under these studio lights. But um, so I was daddy daycare nurse Gatorade mixer. So that was pretty fun. He says, as long as the pump is lower than the radiator, you're fine. I don't know if you've seen this uh, design, but I'm kind of worried <laughs> if that's actually the case. So as you see here, I just did 24 screws. and I'm not saying that was a record, but... All I know is my wrist feels a lot better. I just did 24 screws with this thing. I have not charged it up in weeks. This is a fairly impressive advertisement for Fantic screwdriver. Okay, got to get that one lined up. I do like that this is the uh, the Vetru case with the Vetru fan kit. Looks like it leans back. It should be fine. Yeah, you're right. It should be. Okay, so we're going to install that again. That was pretty fast to swap over. But again, that was just one of the things. I did not pre-measure or do this ahead of time. So we were 50-50 there of if this was going to fit or not. I'm just running the cables through here. And then I'm going to get... Again, if you have to do this one-handed, that's where this screwdriver really comes in handy. Because I can get a screw loaded up into it. If the magnetism holds. I can be lining this up on the inside. Just keeping my cords out from getting pinched. And I can line up the radiator. Now the radiator has got some clearance issues right there with the cords. Okay, we're good to go. Got that one in. Oh, good. And then the inside's going to line up. So we'll push this in. And again, a tip from Iggy, who's actually probably asleep by now. He's on the East Coast. I know he's been up a long time today, but he mentioned that if you look at the fans, the cage side, the side that there has the support for the fan is usually, again, usually, not always, is usually the side that the air is going to. So in my case, we're doing a pull design here. So I'm having the fans forward, which you won't get as much RGB out of, but it'll still look cool. Okay, there we go. So that's installed. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. And we don't need the old back plate. We do need the controller. There's the 360 instructions. I'm gonna move all of this to the side here. Okay. Try to get this down so you guys can see it. Okay, now we'll go to the next step here. Okay, so the side of this pump, so this pump is gonna go in essentially like this. So yeah, that's actually gonna fit pretty well. So I want the logo upright. So it's gonna look something like that when we're done. And then I've got three fans, to be honest, to go through the top here, which we may or may not delay on. <laughs> we may give 
Uh, we may boot this thing up just to be in the interest of time today. I hate to do that to you guys because I know you wanted to see all of this live, but uh, we'll talk about that later. I want to keep the show interesting for people. I do need to look for one more little adapter. There they are. Okay. And this is for the 1700 set. We have to do one more little thing. So uh, in the instructions here, it's going to talk about the installation steps, Intel motherboards. Okay, that's the old one because we're going to look at this one because this has a 1700, sorry. So this one, we have to put the um, fins facing out on this. There's going to be two small screws for each side of the water heat pump here. Now, don't forget this step. Everyone's gonna laugh at me if I didn't do it, but remove this piece of plastic. It will still run with it. It will run hotter with the plastic. And again, really smooth contacts there. And make sure you get this right. Um, I'm just double checking. Yeah, so you want the screws to be from the bottom side of this. And it looks like the way this has a little nub, it won't go in backwards but sometimes it's pretty easy to do that wrong. So just making sure you get that right. And we're going to skip on to the next part here in just a second. The nice thing about all of this is when you have this in, this will have the exact right amount of pressure on the CPU. So you don't have to worry about having the CPU down too hard or not enough. That's what I like about these. If you guys can see that. Oh my gosh, did I see a donation in there? Oh, you know what? Um, I'm going to have to go back and scroll up the chat because somebody may have just done something they shouldn't have. <laughs> if I think I know that person. Let's see. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take a look at scroll up the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh gosh. Okay, that's going to be up there for a little while. <laughs> Zachary gives the a big five hundy. Uh, that is his uh, yearly, bi-yearly, five-year tithe. I really do appreciate that, man. Uh, that is awesome. That is going to help this channel a ton. And I am just lighting this up right now. Um, that is killer, man. Again, thank you so much. Big supporter of the show. Already does a ton of stuff. Is my technical sounding board for a lot of stuff. And uh, just came through with the big 500. So that uh, paid for quite a bit of this machine already. Because I do buy these parts did not come from these manufacturers. Now, it's debatable which way you want to do the... Uh, I'm still shocked about this. I do the P method. A little P size, a little bit. Um, you know, other people do crosses. Other people do different things. Uh, but that's the method that I learned with. And that's how I'm going to do it. So... When you get your channel, you can do however you want. And then I'm going to line this up and I'm going to lock it down. So far, as far as AIOs go, this has not been a bad AIO install. Now, um, I didn't have the kit, so I bought the one that has the right kit um, from the Amazon. It's um, also linked in there. This is going to be a little bit. I said that right when I hadn't done this side of the mount. <laughs> I have to push that up a little bit to get it to thread. Again, because that mount doesn't stick against there as tight as it could. Man, that is awesome. Really do appreciate that. Now, I think he gets to name the build or something cool for that. Uh, let me know in the chat what you guys think uh, Zachary gets for the biggest <laughs> super chat of the night. <laughs> I think he's going to beat you guys all for a while okay i'm gonna tighten these down using the power tool and again i love this thing because it's not going to over tighten your connectors um, you can go back in and snug these up tighter if you want but it, man it makes it super easy to build fast in this so that was pretty quick i'm going to go up here and we're going to attach the pump does not have a speed control on it looks like so i'm going to plug that into the cpu water pump it's number two on this motherboard it's right here uh, if you can see it i'm gonna slide down a little bit so you can see it 
plug that in again because it decided to come out. So that's right there. And we're going to plug that in. And that's for the water pump, as I mentioned here. And I'm going to use one of the addressable RGB headers at the top here for this addressable RGB. And then I'm going to get the power supply and the GPU out because we are almost ready to boot this thing up. Uh, thank you guys again. Thank you for that amazing super chat. <laughs> I'm going to leave that up. <laughs> that is going to be crazy. Crazy. It doesn't matter how you do it. It's wrong. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, 500 super chat. That is that is so killer. That is going to be great. Um, it made my day there zach <laughs> okay let me see i need to grab the power supply which i have sitting over here and it's going to go down the bottom of this now i actually do have some additional power supply vinyl i know zach's tech turf if you guys ever watch him he's big into covering up your power supplies you have a couple options when you're installing your power supply um, if you want to draw air in from the bottom out through the back, you can do that with this downward. It's still going to have the label or you can install it this way. And it's going to keep all the air in the machine. The air is coming in, but then it's shooting it out the back. But since this is inside the machine, I'm actually going to use it as an additional fan to draw air in if it lets me. So I'm going to go ahead and do it that way. And I've got a couple extra of these screws, but you know what? This is going to be funny, but I don't think my screwdriver, no, it's not going to fit. This is going to be challenging. Like I said, these uh, cases like this are always challenging <laughs> because you get that. Now people are like, I can't see the super chat link or the donation or the giveaway link because there's a super chat over it. Yes, there is. <laughs> and it's going to stay that way for a little bit. I will come back. Um, and actually, if anybody wants to put the link in the chats, you may. But I'm going to go ahead and screw this in. Okay. Had to get that started or it was not going to make it. And I'm using not a normal screwdriver for this, as you guys have just figured out, I'm sure. And that is because my normal screwdriver is too tall. This is, again, one of those weird cases that doesn't have anything normal to it. I, it is kind of flimsy here. I don't know if you're seeing this go around, but it's kind of flopping around in here. The metal on this power supply bracket, I think most of the structure is coming from the power supply itself. So that's what we're seeing down there. I wish I could do the overlay and that. You know what I'll do? I will do this. We're going to leave that running. I'm going to do that. And that way I can show it all. <laughs> there you guys go. So if anybody is wondering where the drawing information is, and again, right when we get this thing stood up, I am going to do the drawing here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have to lift this thing up and see what I'm doing. As much as I would love to do that blind. There we go. So there we go. A couple more screws to put in and this power supply will be good Let's see one more over there sorry again for the poor view here and the poor visibility i am just putting the power supply in and they do not give you any room on this one to maneuver <laughs> so i'm having to use just the bit of a screwdriver here and I think that's going to be it. I'm not going to be able to put that last one in for a little while. Okay, so that is the power supply. Let's talk about power supply wiring real quick. Normally, I would try to get this through the bottom of a power supply area. So what I'm going to do is run it back through this corner and try to hide as much of the cabling through the back of the machine because I do think most people are going to see this machine from the front. So again, I know you can't see that, but I'm just holding it over the edge here so I can run the power supply cables down and out the back, and then we'll run them exactly where they need to go, whether it's top, bottom, inside. So, but yeah, uh, <laughs> Zachary won the super chat uh, contest there. There is no contest, a big supporter of the channel. I really do appreciate that, man. 
helps me a lot and sets the bar pretty darn high for everybody else it's probably still showing on youtube is my guess <laughs> Always nice to have good friends, I'm telling you. <laughs> Take a look at the chat real quick. Okay. I don't have space to build my own sim, somebody's saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be nice, you know. Okay, so here's what you're seeing on the back side. This is where I've got the cables coming out the back. Now, I know that my EPS cable is going to go up to the very top. So when I say EPS cable... Uh, meaning the auxiliary or the additional 12 volt. I'm trying to like do a little bit of cable grooming here as I go. Okay, so these are both EPS. So I'm going to send those up the back side of this. Now, the other hard drive location was here. They said that you could put your hard drives there. Uh, I'm going to see if I can do this maybe. Uh oh, not going to fit if I go that way. So I'm going to have to go over the top. Okay, so this is already super tight i'm gonna get these power supply connections in and we'll do the last one we'll go from there so hopefully you guys are all having a great night hopefully you guys are ready to see this thing boot up i know i am can't wait to see what this thing looks like gold plated screwdriver is that what i need to get uh zach i might have to think about that best super chat so far gets the gold plated screwdriver i could see pulling that off <laughs> the the big donor award i love it okay here we go i'm gonna try to hide some of these in this old cutout here uh, GPU is going to be somewhere around here, so I'm going to kind of stub these out here. I want to run my connectors. And I have, um, coming from the kit, by the way, so this is from the V360 Lurker kit. So this is, for the front fans, this is the triple that I was talking about earlier. So this is that triple adapter. So this is going to basically take one PWM signal it's going to run it to the first fan, which is going to do the temp and the speed and all that. And then it's going to run the RPM for the other two. So that's the triple that I'm basically attaching back here. I'll try to do this in a way that you guys can see it. That's really trusting that nothing falls out of the PC while it's on its back. So again, this is the triple. These are the fan headers that come out. Um, I don't want the RGB headers. So I'm just trying to get those off to the side. And I do have a controller I'm going to have to line up here somewhere. So one, two, you know what? This one is the lower, so I'm going to do it the lowest. Two and three. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to see if I can run this one up to the top. There's a chassis spot at the top i was looking at earlier i want to run that over here and then i can try to tuck the cables in and i might run it better down below later so that's going to be run off the motherboard that's going to be under the chassis fan so you can do that either through the windows system or you can do it through the bios oh don't get me started on the pronunciation of bios because we'll be here all night um, so again another feature that comes with the 360 is this sata to rgb controller now the nice thing about this is it's going to have multiple rgb outs and then one motherboard connector now you can run this if you don't happen to have for your specific uh, pc if you don't have addressable rgb you can just run this and it has a little magnetic uh, connector on the back sorry i'm going to do this again for you guys from the top down camera so you guys can actually see what i'm doing so what I'm doing is I'm connecting this and um, I, I've seen these as VDG or three pin RGB, but basically there's two pins, a space, and then the next pin. And so I'm going to go ahead and connect these the correct way. And these can be very finicky. I'm just getting lucky on that one because um, after I fought with it, then it decided to work. There you go. So there is room for one more fan. So I could put um, an additional fan on that. 
you know, if I wanted to link the motherboard one, I could do that. There's not quite enough length here with these. So I'm going to have to get one power supply header. Where is that? So this is where the modular versus non-modular power supply comes in. So I only connected the cables that I needed. And now I'm going through and I'm looking for a SATA power for that connector. Now I do have additional ARGBs, but it's not going to do anything for me in this case. Um, I don't benefit from those because I need to have, and these are not daisy chained or anything like that. I need to have power for this. So I'm going to go ahead and add that real quick to the front of the power supply. And this again, theme PC, this can be the challenge here because I have to connect now to this SATA power block which it's going to fit pretty well, it looks like. So that's what I'm doing here. It's right on the front of the power supply or what would have been the front. And then I'm going to run it out the bottom and the back here. And we'll go there. Now I do have a Molex in there. And again, someday I will clean this thing all up and make it super pretty for you guys. Taking a look here. <laughs> Good luck. This will be the second build I've seen on here. I'm going to build my first one soon. Hey, okay, we can put that up there. Thank you, Jefferson. Uh, yeah, man, uh, you can do it. That's what I keep telling people, you know, everybody that's thinking this is voodoo, it is absolutely not. You know, if I can do it, so can you. There's a lot of creators in the channel here that'll give you support. Uh, come back every week, Tech on Tuesday. This is Tuesday, every week at 5.30. And you'll be able to get support for your PC build and if you have questions about compatibility parts or whatever feel free to shoot them out there because uh, these guys in the chat have years of experience now i'm actually just going to stick this to the back metal of the case um, i actually do have that right there and then i'm going to attach it to one of the addressable rgb headers on the inside just doing that real quick i'll show you guys that in just one second yeah whoever came up with the three pin our addressable RGB concept. Yeah, they can do something. Um, and I'll tell you why, because these are absolutely impossible to put on easily. So what I'm doing right here, and sorry for the earthquake is I'm just taking this little adapter and I'm trying with the best light to get that on and it doesn't want to go. Because of course not. So I'm going to try the socket next to it. There we go. That one fit on better. Okay. So now we're connected. Looks good there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the IO. Now this IO block may or may not go fast. It depends on how much that it's got. Um, most of these are pretty standard. The colors are pretty standard. Now, again, I would love to hide these, but they don't give me a lot of option here. So I'm trying to make it look good and make it functional, <laughs> which is not generally easy to do both on. Okay. And not unplug everything I just did in the process. That would be helpful as well. Okay. So now I can look on the back side of this. Let me go back out here. No, that's not the best camera. This is probably the best camera here. So I'm working on the back side of this. I'm going to run my cables through and back through the front wherever they need to go. So in this case, this is going to be my blue USB three. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to attach it to the lower USB three port, the one that's the cleanest that I can find here. So try to make the install as clean as possible. Got that. Um, this one is the HD audio or USB, USB on this one. And I'm going to try to connect that from the bottom USB two. So again, just to show you guys what I'm, where I'm working is I'm working through the bottom. And again, that's just a neat thing is you just follow again, the paths for all these. So this should be my HD audio, which it is. That's usually towards the back of the motherboard and they're indexed. So I was able to do that pretty quickly. And then the last one here is this cluster and it's a large cluster with lots of different ones. So 
Um, this is going to be your hard drive LEDs, your power, your other stuff. I'm going to come in through the front here. I'm going to lay this down as you guys watch as I put this on here. Now, all of these are going to be covered in the motherboard manual that you get. They're also labeled very, very small <laughs> on the motherboard itself, or should be. So my power switch I know is this one. Hard drive LED is this one. And power LED plus and minus are this and this. Now, uh, hopefully I get that right. And if I'm wrong, that would not be good. Okay. So those are connected. The last thing we need in here is a GPU. Now, technically, if I was worried that this thing may not post, may have done something wrong, is I could run this without a GPU and I could actually get it to work without that. So by just running this real quick here, running it without a GPU, uh, because this is the case SKU, I can run it and it'll work right off of there. If you're just joining us, this is John the Net Guy. We are doing a quick PC build tonight, just a shade under two hours now, <laughs> in this very unique Vetru case. Uh, and I am actually going to pull all of the stickers off of this now. Let me make sure I've got it in the Amazon chat. Thank you if you guys are just joining me on uh, Amazon. It's awesome. Uh, positive vibes, everybody's saying. <laughs> you know, lots, of, lots of conversation in the Amazon chat going tonight. Uh, let me go over here, and I'm going to bring up the GPU that we're using. So this is the Tough Gaming. Again, right now, this one is available for $674. Uh, that's a deal. Uh, 674 bucks you know people were scalping these for much 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 more the capabilities on this card this is definitely the sweet spot as zachary our big super chatter of the night said um fantastic deal i have to tell the wife that's like part of her cruise fund right there you know <laughs> he's also super chatted for her cruise fund in the past uh you know hopefully we'll get there so there we go and I'm just taking all this plastic off of here because I want this thing to look as cool as it can when we put it together. And I'm going to take the back plastic. There is plastic on the back of this one as well that they ask you to remove. And then we'll see. There we go. Now there is a little bit of contention here with these hoses and the GPU. You can move these hoses. That's one thing. You saw me just push them off to the side. There are gaskets on that connection and that was able to slide over. I just want you guys to know that in case you're ever building your own PC and you're like, oh, this has to fit the exact way it came out. And I'm actually going to take this other cover off. I almost forgot. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely do that um, you can move these around as needed and as they said you just want the pump below the top just for a vapor lock condition if you actually did have some air get into the system um, you don't want that to be air locked okay so that was a little bit again a fitment alignment it's not the best but this is a very unique looking case that's for sure and i'm going to save the last three fans here I'll do, and then you guys can catch those up later if you take a look at me on my socials. You'll absolutely get to see this later if you're one of those people. Okay, so I'm taking a look for my chat, folks. Oh, almost forgot the power connectors for the GPU. That would have been one. Uh, but I'm just going to ask out there, did I forget anything? And I'm going to daisy chain these even though I tell people not to. Um, so this is going to take dual 8 pins plenty of power on this one being used but do we think this is going to post did i forget a step <laughs> did i uh, take a shortcut we're going to find out pretty darn quickly and see if this thing will boot up okay gpu's got power gpu is down memory is in got my eps connectors i've got my pump connected and addressable rgb Got my power supply. I've got oop, this another thing to check for clearance. That uh, power switch cable block was getting into the fan. It would be really cool if this thing had a vertical mount GPU. This would be like one of the coolest looking cases. I think it's a cool looking case to begin with. 
but we're going to take a look real quick here <laughs> and we're going to see i'm just taking a look at the chat just need to post 100 percent complete i'm hearing a lot of people saying this thing's ready to go so i'm going to believe them and put some parts over here that we didn't use and we're going to get my elusive power cable and my video cables out and we're going to see what happens to this thing so i've been hiding over here the whole night <laughs> I've been hiding an HDMI cable. Oh, and you know what? It cannot connect and, oh, maybe. Let's do this. I really need the HDMI on the other side here. So I want to show this to you guys the right way. One second. Oh, this is going to be tight. <laughs> okay. Connecting the HDMI in the back here for the gaming PC. I got those. We're going to need a keyboard. I've got a mouse. And the big bet is it's going to post. As soon as it posts and we get it to boot up, I'm going to switch over and we are going to do the drawing for the joystick. So let me close out of here. My browser crashed over here too, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, and I got my joystick on the ready. So video, keyboard, mouse, oh, network. Don't let me forget network. And we're gonna find out Oh man, the power cord goes through the bottom and then inside to the power connector. <laughs> That's really kind of interesting. I never thought about that, but how would you get power to this if you didn't have that? So this is the machine that we just built live on the show. Do me a quick favor. If you haven't already, take a look. I'm going to take the caption off for the joystick and take a look at following me down there below. I would really, really appreciate that. If you're on Amazon, you haven't done that already. Uh, we've been spending a couple hours here tonight building a computer together. Very cool looking machine. I am going to put the glass covers on once we get everything booted up. But I'm about ready to hit the power button. I don't know about you, but <laughs> this has been quite the build. This is a 12700. I see a little hint that we might be in good luck here. I see that little light coming off of the motherboard. And I hit the power button. And there we go. <laughs> now, you won't be able to see it much. But let's go ahead and go over here and let's see if it picks that monitor to post there it did we got the post okay i said that we would do the drawing as soon as it posted it is there we are running windows 11 on it i just want to make sure it gets up to the windows prompt because that means i did something right today and then i'm going to pull up all the ridiculously cool performance that this thing has there we go and uh, don't look at my pin number <laughs> <laughs> there we go and you can see we've got all the games and all the stuff is preloaded ready to go on it for you guys um, definitely going to give you a cool intro to all of these things we'll go into phase two on that but what i got to do right now is i'm going to log in for the drawing if you haven't signed up for the drawing my apologies it is closed now we are going to go ahead and do the drawing and we're going to get the logitech joystick now let me show you <laughs> this joystick so you guys know what we're talking about here uh, this is from Logitech, and this is one of my favorite joysticks out there right now. Uh, I'm going to pull it up on the carousel just to make sure I got it. This is the Logitech G Extreme 3D. Now, that's this guy right here. Let me turn this guy a little bit towards you. Maybe you guys can see the RGB. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> now, that's just using its built-in RGB controller. I can change the colors. That is kind of cool how it goes through the the radiator there it actually does look really cool from the back here so i may uh, move a camera around here in just a little bit so you guys can see that but uh very cool looking machine but this is the joystick that we're talking about today this is the one that you guys are going to be able to win and one of the really brilliant things about it can you take off the name where i actually put my name as joystick blonde oh yes i will take a look at that brandy i appreciate that um, nice things about it 12 individual buttons four axes so it's going to have rudder here it's going to have pitch, roll, yaw, all that stuff, and a throttle back here. So it's got all the capabilities that you want in a flight simulator joystick. It's one of my favorites. I love using that one. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up 
the website that's got my prize info on it. And appreciate all of you guys that have stuck in through this. My diehards, uh, Zachary, my <laughs> crazy super chatter of the night. I think that's going to be his new nickname. Thank you guys all for doing that. Surprised you can see the fans through the radiator. That's from Jeremy. Absolutely, man. Uh, it's definitely a cool capability for sure that you can see the fans through the radiator. I like that. I like that look a lot. Just logging in. I'm downloading right now the list that you guys all did uh, signing up for this. This is John the Net Guy. If you're just joining us, we're taking a quick look right now. Oh, and I've somehow pinned a message. Sorry about that. <laughs> my my poor little browser's been running all night on this machine. It's uh, do you really want to reload? Yes. I want to give you a break for a second browser. I'm going to go in here and we're going to get all of the entries. We're looking at the submissions here. Okay, yeah, wow, we got a ton of you guys that entered here. I'm just going to get them into the prize wheel. I, you know, some really cool YouTuber, Amazon Live people, they have assistants that do this, you know, and the reason that they have assistants that do this is that they've got a couple thousand followers. That's going to get me to the A-list. That is my plug tonight, by the way. Uh, really would appreciate it if you haven't followed me on Amazon. Go ahead and do that right now, and I will, while I'm tabulating this, and I'll find where I put my phone down. If you are a follower uh, on there, Scott, like Scott, who followed, that is awesome. I'll give you a shout-out on here. I see a lot of familiar names in here. I see a lot of people, some people that have actually won prior giveaways. So this is absolutely true. There is no, <laughs> okay. I see what you're saying about your two joystick entries there. Um, okay. Well, some of those names are awfully close to each other, but I'm going to call them different people. So I'm going to say this one is joystick V and joystick A just so we have a good number. I got a lot of people entered on this one. Wow. Uh, Eli, you're in there as well. Thank you so much. Jonathan, you are in. You made it through the cutoff. And I'm going to pull up right now the giveaway so we can go do that. Thank you so much. Oh, never won on your stream. No, Jennifer, tonight is your night. I can totally feel it. Uh, let's pull up our spinning wheel and we will see what it says <laughs> okay it's loading up right now i promise this has been a heavy day on this computer i need to figure out what it's doing it's like doing like a defrag in the background that'll be just my luck 100 percent cpu where's it all going system that's a good one system is always a, a popular process Restream.io. Sorry, I'm just getting you guys up here so that you guys can see this. Oh, poor Edge is crashing on this machine. Maybe we need to do it on the new computer. How cool would that be? That would be pretty fun to join the new computer and do that. Again, just copying the info over here right now. We'll get you guys going. Thank you for everybody that showed up tonight. We'll get this going. And then... For the really die hard among you, I will be showing you uh, the performance of said computer. But to get that up, we're going to use a new tab. I'm just going to do spinner wheel on my Chrome and see if I can really destroy Chrome. Today, we'll get our spinning wheel going. If you're in the chat, let me know where you guys are from. Uh, if you're comfortable with doing that, um, it'd be interesting to see. I want to figure out who the furthest person away is tonight. Um, Eli, I see you were in there. That would be so cute. <laughs> oh no, the picture's blurry. Hopefully not me. Um, you know, that should be fine. Let's see here. Uh-oh. You know what? I am going to do one thing real quick, you guys. I want to make sure that we get this running right. And my Chrome is not running right. I'm going to restart this computer over here real fast. 
Um, just while we're doing that, I can talk and switch over to this one. So um, this is the new machine that we built here real quick. And again, I just wanted to uh, share with you just a little bit about the performance on it, um, the numbers that it's capable of. This is a, a quick tool that I use. It's called Crystal Disk Mark. And this is going to show you the performance of that solid state drive. So while this computer is restarting over here, apologize for the delay, we're going to show you, so we're going to do a simple benchmark. So this is something that we would normally do. It's benchmarking the C drive right now on this, and this is in megabytes per second. So this is from that Rocket solid state drive. This is the Sam, oh, sorry, Sabrent Rocket Q4 NVMe. And what we're looking for is the performance of it. This is a four by four. So it's PCIe four by four lanes. So it's one of the fastest that you can get right now. Um, you know, it is going to have a faster read speed. They go up to 7,000, not this one specifically, but some of the other brands. This one I've been getting about 4,600. That looks normal. It's going to taper down as you go down the list. And actually, I'm just going to do a full stop here and I'm going to run these tests if it'll let me. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to do one try. And I want to see if it'll let me do this test only. Um, so the write speeds are going to be somewhere around 1800 to 2000, which is a little bit slower, but the read speeds are really where it's at for gaming. And this is one that has one of the best read speeds that are out there. So again, 4,600, that's what we're seeing, which was expected. It's going to do the other two and I'm loading up our data in Chrome again. So we'll get going there. We'll do this drawing as I promised. Nice blue flower. That is actually the Windows 11. Thank you guys for checking in, by the way, on that. Um, but his watermark is fine, somebody says. Looks like I'm staring into deep space. Uh-oh. Something happened to my video. You know what? That's going to have to be restream right there. Hopefully everything's working. Everything is back, Jeremy says. Okay, back to normal. I'll take that. Yeah, I'm guessing it was this PC. I'm glad I rebooted because... It looks much better on here already. Let me get logged in and logged out of things. That's the important part. <laughs> that was interesting. I don't know what happened over here. Maybe we've been pushing this too hard for two hours here doing this stream. But again, uh, totally appreciate you guys are checking in on Amazon. I do want to give this joystick to you guys. Uh, one of the things that this joystick excels at is Microsoft Flight Simulator. So as I'm getting this computer booted up in the right thing, I'm going to open my Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I got to use the actual mouse for Flight Sim. There we go. So that was the 2000 was the speed that we were looking at of the SSD there for write speeds. Let um, me go OK. And I'm going to do Edge. I like to do my uh, giveaways in Edge. Give me one second here. Oh, da, 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 da. Delimited file, yes. Comma delimited. <laughs> Finish. There we go. Giving it away there. Uh, and I'm going to do joystick V and joystick A for the ones that put joystick in as their uh, name on the screen. And I got everybody back. So we should be able to see this giveaway shortly. And it's running much better. Give me one second to get this configured and we will get going on the giveaway. Um, I'm going to do this. We are going to spin for 19 seconds. Lucky 19 today. I'm going to go over here, say window, spinner wheel, share, apply settings, close out of this, full screen. There is everybody, and I'm going to bring this up for you by hitting this so you can see it. Everybody hopefully can see their names on there. I do thank you guys all again. This is for the Logitech Extreme. Now, I will be shipping one of these out to you following all the rules. Again, U.S. people only. Really do appreciate that. We've got the three joysticks in there. Uh, whoever did that, hopefully you guys all see your names in there. And we're going to hit go on this, and it is going to start spinning right now. Thank you guys all for playing. I know this is probably throwing everything off. <laughs> mm. I see D. Frank in there. Oh, Jeff, Michael... Michael L. I think that's where it's going to stop. Oh, it's going so slow right there towards the end. 
Michael L., you have won the drawing. I will get your prize out to you very shortly. Again, want to thank you so much for watching tonight, Michael. Uh, we built this 12700, and you have just won this Extreme 3D joystick. If you didn't win the joystick, there's still another way you can get it. You can buy it down below. 30 bucks. It's a great deal. Let me pull up the Amazon page on that. And just so you guys know, if you ever need to know how to get to my stuff, it's Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash the net guy. So we're going to pull that up here. This is my Amazon page. If you come down here, you can see all the stuff that I'm doing. If you go to idea list, this is a, a curated list of every single show I've done. It's going to have all the products on it as well. So this one is the best seller right now, $30.43 prime delivery. You can see I bought one back in January. I've had one for years. It's one of the best selling ones out there. Taking a look quickly at the ratings, 4.5 out of 5. Um, this is one of the best ones I've ever seen for squadrons. Now you can get a, a HOTAS or a hands off throttle, whatever, and stick. Uh, you know, they're pretty good, but this is, you know, compact, fits really nicely on your desk. Uh, doesn't take too much space. That's one of the things I really like about it. So thank you guys again who joined there. Um, I don't use Chrome because of security. Somebody's saying there. That's true. Well, you know, my machine uh, did not like Chrome. So let me take a couple uh, quick peeks here at the performance on this machine. I'm actually going to log in to one of my servers and I'm going to pull up the performance specs of this. I want to give you guys like a better view of this machine because it is so cool. It's got all that RGB going on. Again, can you guys see that okay? <laughs> I want to turn it this way a little bit so you guys can see that RGB from the inside because that's so cool. Now, I actually have a three-fan kit that I did not want to push you guys through, but this is the same kit from Vetru. It's the same exact fans. I got three more for the top here and one for the back, so this thing's going to have plenty of airflow. Um, the other thing, this is for the ASMR fans out there. Um, this is the tempered glass sides. Now, we can do a quick peel reveal huh see if it'll work Ooh, i love to see the ones that like i love to see the ones that do this and then the like the thing falls and it shatters but <laughs> this comes you can see how clean that tempered glass is right now until all my fingerprints are on it this comes with four bolts that are on each side you line this up like that and that's the kind of that tempered glass smoked tempered glass look that it gives you and very very simple to just add these little thumb screws of course the hardest thing is to do this without putting a bunch of fingerprints on it which is what i'm doing right now it's putting fingerprints in it so uh, but i'm going to pull that up that peel was better than the 3070 peel. Well, you know, I appreciate that. You know, there's even another backside. If I, I knew if I screwed it up, I had one more peel to go. So I took a risk there. <laughs> Pinky, it's got to be like tomorrow for you, isn't it? I appreciate you staying up, man. He's a, another great creator on the West Coast, or West Coast, East Coast. I'm up here in Seattle area on the West Coast. So this is where, again, fit and finish and fitment. Eh. Okay, there we go. You kind of have to wiggle it around a little bit. It's all sheet metal. There we go. They did not provide this machine uh, for me to demo for you guys. Again, this is out of my pocket here. Wanted to do a, a really cool PC build video for you. Uh, again, coolest flight simulator I've ever built machine. But I'm going to bring this up here so you guys can see the flight simulator. And we're going to play it real quick. <laughs> I just want to show you again how this thing plays and what kind of performance you can look forward to. I did a little bit of the performance benchmarking on this. Um, and we'll talk about that and show it up here in just a second. But performance of this has been phenomenal. I will put the audio through. I'm going to say keep default. I will put the audio through, but just let me know if it's too loud or too quiet. That's always been a real big problem here, um, you know, on here. Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> and yes, oh, that's one of the things I did want to show you. <laughs> I did I did save this. I don't know if it's going to work here because there, there we go. So this is uh, Orville and Wilbur Wright. 
That is a U.S. pilot's license. That is my pilot's license. I am actually a, a licensed private pilot only. No, none of the crazy stuff, none of the commercial instrument rated, all that stuff. But um, I love Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've been playing this simulator since I was a kid. I was shocked when they said they were getting rid of it. I'm so happy that they brought it back because it is such a great game. And I'm just looking at audio. I need to turn down that audio a little bit. Let me know. Again, if the game audio is too loud. Uh, VFR, Jeremy. No IFR on this side. So there's a bunch of different ones that we can do. A um, bunch of different canyon runs. I've done a couple of them. This is going to be a California low altitude run. And I know to hit the fly in the corner. We're going to just show you how well this machine performs in Microsoft Flight Simulator. A couple things about Flight Simulator. Really graphically intensive. This is all on ultra settings, on the highest settings. So it's going to do real well. Um, Restream is not going to show this in its best light and all the compression and stuff that's going through these. You're not going to get the super fast gameplay that you would playing it directly, but <laughs> this is my low altitude challenge. Let me know again if the audio is too loud here or if you don't hear it at all because I can adjust it. So very cool uh, looking view here. Again, textures, if I look out the windows, you know, there's my ghost plane that I'm supposed to be following. Whoa, upside down. <laughs> and if I could get to an outside view, the one problem I would say is that there are so many buttons that it actually makes it difficult to map what every button does. So that's one of the things that can be difficult with all of Microsoft Flight Simulators. Um, is that and then you know the zoom getting all the zoom and everything right but yeah this is the the frame rates that you can expect on this i want to see about external camera well that's the forward camera yeah. and then w there we go nope you can see all around it's got all of the hot keys uh whoa there we go <laughs> And I crashed. So that again is Microsoft Flight Simulator. It works really, really well on this. Another one I want to show you real quick too, just bouncing between a few games, is Cyberpunk 2077. This is a game that just, it, it was known to destroy even the best computers when it came out. It has gotten better. Okay, somebody's saying the game audio is a little bit low. Um, it has gotten a whole lot better. I haven't had enough time to play it really, and I hadn't had, honestly, a machine that was good enough to play it for the longest time but we're gonna have some fun here because I want to show you the benchmark alone on this so we're doing it live you saw me build the whole machine here from scratch I didn't cut away didn't do anything especially if you've been here the whole night um, so definitely what resolution I'm actually running 1024 that's a great question pinky I'm running 1024 on this just because of my capture cards but I've seen that you can get over 45 frames a second on uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator which again 45 frames a second on a simulator is great you know over 30 um, around 60 would be the sweet spot but yeah again you can get 45 frames a second easily on flight sim at 4k so full 4k ultra again i'm going to show you the settings on this i'm going to go in here um, graphics on this one are going to be on ray tracing high ray tracing ultra and all of the settings are going to be ultra or high this is the default for benchmarking all of the ray tracing is up and then the video resolution is going to be windowed borderless. I'm just going to go full screen if it lets me. I just like the tiny, tiny bit of performance advantage I think that you get from full screen. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit run benchmark. I just want you guys to see the FPS counter in the corner because this thing is phenomenal. <laughs> oh, Jonathan wants to get Cyberpunk 2077. It is an interesting game. I'll put it that way. There's some... The gameplay on it is is great. I've had a lot of really a lot of fun on that. Okay, so it's got all the game loaded and it's going again. Game loads faster because of that NVMe. So we're up there at 76, 74. You know what I did not do? And I realized this when I assembled this whole thing and we got it set up. I did not enable um, the DOCP or the the you know memory at to run at the highest speeds. Because I was actually getting a, almost 120 earlier on this thing, same exact settings. So that's a really interesting difference there. And we'll see if it speeds up here a little bit. So it's over 90 frames per second on ultra, you know, in some areas. This scene is, gets me every time when I'm benchmarking. 
just the reflections that you get with these cards are just amazing. So it's getting a solid 85. <laughs> uh, Jonathan's one, yeah, that's expensive. Yeah, it is. It is absolutely expensive. But, you know, great looking game, especially if you want to have that ray traced experience. You can see all the shadows, the variations of colors. It's not just everything that's in a shadow is black now and things are casting shadows. Uh, very, very cool, you know. And we're getting 98, 93. I have a recording of it earlier. Surprise, surprise. And the other thing that I'm wondering, too, is I have... Oh, flip up the broken fin. I could do that. Let me do this. Somebody asked. Okay. Do, do, do. There was a fin here, and I'll put a screw in there temporarily. There we go. Looks just like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, there, somebody asked about that, but I am actually mirroring this so that you guys can see it and I can see it at the same time. Uh, that may be a difference, but I was actually able to get this thing at over 120 just locked at full max settings on a single monitor. Uh, maybe the fact that I'm mirroring and doing a bunch of other stuff here that was slowing it down a little bit. But that is going to be your Cybertrunk 2077 test. Um, I'm going to spare you the details here, but I think I actually have... The Cinebench score, do I have that uploaded? Ooh, I don't have the Cinebench score uploaded, but let me give you a second and I'll get that going. We're going to start Cinebench and I'll let you guys see this because this is the cool thing. Now, I don't know what the CPU temperature is going to be, but I can tell you what it was before. So I use uh, HW Info 64. That's how I run my uh, thermals when I'm watching this. So we're going to do sensors only. I try to only run that, not OneDrive, nothing else. Of course, it tries to throw everything else in there while we're doing any sort of benchmarks. Um, I t if you follow me on Twitter, <laughs> I've been totally trolling on Twitter today. Uh, Pinky Tech said something about, you know, benchmarking with, close OneDrive, uh, benchmarking your graphics card with Cinebench. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I totally use that just to, to you know, lean into it. I had a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do Cinebench and know this is the CPU. And I know it's going to be really hard to read, but I'm going to call them out here. So right now, CPU is 21. Minimum was 17. Maximum was 37 during all of those benchmarks that we had before. Multi-core benchmark in Cinebench. Now, I want to show you something interesting, too. If we go into performance here, I go to CPU. I already broke it out, but this is actually what you're getting. This is all of those CPUs. You have 12 cores. Eight of them are performance cores for efficiency, plus the hyper threading. That's where you're getting 20 logical. So um, definitely faster than a lot. Oh, it actually does have my last run score. And I'm going to see if I can just zoom in this way. This is totally cheating, but this is Windows key zoom. And take that. <laughs> so this thing came out with, and again, not tuned up, not you know fancy. This thing came in with a 21,414 score. Um, so you're talking, that's incredibly fast. Um, that's well over my 5,800 uh, score. And I think that's also pushing 5,900 territory, but we'd have to check. So another, another crazy score on that. Uh, <laughs> there we go. And then I'm going to just do an escape out and we'll get out of there. But again, to show you it's real, I'm going to run the Cinebench. And I want to see, that was that last Cinebench score. That's their apparently networking hotkey. Now, this is not going to be a valid test because I'm using the computer, but I'm just trying to get us back to, unfortunately, I closed out of the hardware info, but I wanted to get the uh, sensor info off the CPU. So we know that the resting CPU rate, now it's doing Windows authentication here. It's having to share processor time. So I'm going to start and stop Cinebench when we get it in there. So we'll do yes. Um, we'll do Yes. I'm going to stop Cinebench real quick. I'm going to do it again once I get the hardware info screen up. There we go. Okay. So uh, core temperature 21, max 36 it's saying right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit start on this. And then I'm going to go over here. And I'll try to call them out. Just the rate that it draws is impressive with the 20 uh, threads that's going on here. Um, Jonathan Talks Hardware says, try using the superposition benchmark. I have not done that before. Really good question. I, I'm going to have to look into that. I haven't used that one. Um, might be a good one there. <laughs> the net guy on Twitter, <laughs> I'm trolling me today. Yeah, it's, it's true. But now we're running, again, I can hear the pump running, maybe a little tiny bit of pump line. 
but you know just the the you can see all those threads now four of those are going to be efficiency so they're not going to close as fast but you see how quick all 20 draw on this unbelievably fast cpu <laughs> on how quickly it's dividing this and dividing those workloads i'm going to go down here temperature is 57 it's saying right now again this is actually allowing it to go much higher so i had a lower temperature honestly with the other cooler i'm going to look into that um, but this is staying below 60 right now so cpu package has 66 total um, distance to tj max that's not distance to tj max the store for anybody wondering that's the distance to thermal junction so that's as hot as it's going to get so um, you know very cool feature there i'm going to pull the cpu up since we're doing cpu benchmarking and pull the cpu up on amazon probably one of the best budget cpus you can get right now if you're looking for high performance budget uh 377 if you buy the kf SKU, which the performance from my understanding is exactly the same and you have to have a gpu so if you don't want a gpu maybe you're just doing a lot of database serving or have a home server or something this is already running faster you can see so um, performance on my last test is the one lower right here it's a little bit maybe 10 percent more maybe a little bit more um, from my last test but i didn't have this much cooling available <laughs> so this is staying you know at 66 was its max but it's staying at about 53 now um, and distance to tj max it means how much overhead we have until we have to slow down so uh, 62 celsius 63 celsius for that so definitely a lot of room on here but super uh performance out of the system so that is the computer uh, i wanted to thank you guys all uh, for showing up today i am going to give you one quick sneak preview <laughs> of what's coming next week and only because i wanted to show you some of the really interesting stuff that's been getting sent to me uh, next week if everything goes well is going to be a mobile show we're going to talk about mobile devices we're going to talk about uh, cool stuff i have a ipad case that is kid friendly but doesn't look like a kid's ipad case it's got really good shock absorption uh it has a, a kickstand so you can watch movies on it i've been using this with the kids um, but this one works really well and i've been using an ipad more and more lately i really want to use an ipad with the show so i can i don't have to keep going to the laptop and doing all that stuff i can definitely get it to work with my ipad so that's one of the things i'm going to talk about i do have a stylus for that ipad because i want to do some drawing sometimes to show you guys you know, if it's cable routing or something, I want to be able to circle and highlight and do stuff. So um, they actually sent this active stylus out. And for the price on this one compared to the actual Apple one, you're saving a ton. I do have a dual port USB-C charger. So this one is the Mag Cube from AOHI. AOHI? AOHI. Um, and they also sent me their USB-C to USB-C. So for laptops that don't need a ton of power, um, MacBook Airs, especially the new M2 series, you know, this could be a really cool charging solution. And the one that I think is kind of sneaky and you guys may or may not uh, think that it's interesting, <laughs> I think it's crazy interesting, is from Divine Eagle, it's this little tiny power brick. And when I say mobile uh, products, this is a Apple looking power brick, small black, you know, plug into the wall power brick. That's a security camera. <laughs> It's a, I finally got my hands on one of these. If you follow me on Twitter, you saw my post about that, but it is a normal size power brick, but it has an SD card slot and a 1080p camera. So it's a pinhole security camera and it works as a power brick. So nobody's going to know that it's actually a security camera. Use this wisely, but I'm very excited to show you guys this. I it's still in the packaging. I'm going to test this thing out and hopefully have it for you guys for next week. I'm going to take a quick look at the chat, make sure I did not miss anything. Uh, super appreciate all of you guys that showed up today, uh, made this what it is and stayed along with me. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, super to have you guys all here. I will be here next week for tech on Tuesday, five 30. It's going to be a mobile spectacular. Who knows? Maybe I'll even have this machine back here in the corner and I'll show you what it looks like with the back cover on those additional three fans. But if you did purchase anything during the show, I really do appreciate it and thank you about that. Thank you to Zachary for the ridiculous super chat. Uh, Eli, who started the whole trend here. I'll catch you later, man, for that refund. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but no, I do thank you guys all for that. And uh, I will catch you guys on next week's show. Thanks again. <laughs>